We're going to try in 1440p tonight. We'll see if that actually really? works. Yeah. And you, you tried that one time and it crashed like halfway through. Yeah, I, d I don't remember oh, if I did I that or not. All that, yeah, was that, that's a notification. I think my lights are a little... Oh, that's right. I cranked the heck out of that light. Hold on. We, we are streaming, by the way. Oh. <laughs> what? Huh? We're, we're, we should be live. We're. Oops, that's... Sam, hold on. Craft computing is live now. Multi-stream with restraint. Shut up. At least they didn't call you Alan. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Sorry, I had one of my lights oh. cranked all the way up. <clears throat> Are we live? Are we live? Hold on. I don't know. I got the, the message on. Oh, wait. I got a tab or. I must see what it is. There we go. There we're live. We're live. For some reason, my YouTube link was not working. Welcome to Talking Heads, hey. everyone. Your once weekly live show for the latest in beer and tech news. I'm Jeff. I'm John. Or as they say, I'm the offspring of Christopher Lloyd and Keith Sutherland. That's right. Uh, young, Christopher young Christopher Lloyd. Young. Young Christopher Lloyd. That's <laughs> right. It's the hair. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show, everybody. Uh, let me know, as always, what are you guys drinking down in the comments below. We'll give a couple shout-outs while, uh, while we get started, if yes. I can talk tonight. Uh, should be a good show tonight. Uh, we've got uh, a little bit of leaked information about some possible Intel 10-core CPUs coming out. Uh, we've got the big news of the week, which is the Google 4K game streaming platform, potentially up to 8K, but we'll possible. get into that. Uh, new Oculus Rift headset, new Microsoft vulnerability, and... RTX coming to GTX cards. Woo! So it is all smoke and mirrors. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had that joke preloaded. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, welcome to the show. Uh, John, how's your week going? Uh, it's been good. I got uh, families, all of my family here in town. Uh, we did an episode. If anyone watched my show, you would have probably seen it. Yep. So we drank a really big beer. And yeah. It was, we did it all on St. Patrick's Day and because all my brothers were there. I busted up all of my rare stuff, yeah. all of the big heavy hitters, and I woke. I think everyone's <laughs> wife complained to their husband the next fall. I got a message of, why did you let him drink that much? <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't remember drinking that much. <laughs> yeah. Nice. So, but then I was like, oh, I'll bring a rare beer to Jeff's. That's right. So, nice. Yeah, some look, good stuff. Looking forward to this yeah. one. Yeah, I hear your, your, your past couple of days have been kind of rough, though. They've been a little bit rough, yeah. Um, uh, not going to get into some personal issues that, that I had, had happened, but... Uh, too much Taco Bell. Yeah. Oof. Boy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but no. Uh, yeah. Last couple days. Uh, for, for those who don't know, I don't think I've, I've ever talked about this. I do. Some people say, oh, I suffer from insomnia. I have insomnia. Yeah. It's, uh, it, it's those people who get offended when you say, oh, you're so OCD. And they say, my father had OCD. And how dare you? <laughs> I don't get offended, but I really have insomnia. Uh, so I've. I'm running on about six hours of really not good sleep in the last three days. Yeah. And then at the same time, you were telling me you put up a trampoline. <laughs> yeah. So uh, um, anyway, so we, we had a doctor's appointment for my daughter this morning. Uh, and then afterwards, I was like, oh, we need to go to the store, do a little grocery shopping. And then I'll come home. Nice, easy day around the house. Yeah. Maybe take a couple of naps, hydrate, get a lot of water, you know, try, try to take care right, of myself yeah. today. In that mode. And uh while we're at Walmart, we're walking, just walking around the store, and uh, there's a brand new inbox. Box was damaged. 14 foot trampoline with the full net kit and oh, everything yeah, the else. Safety stuff. The, the full safety stuff, 100 bucks. Oh. So I ended up building a trampoline today. <laughs> By yourself. Uh, yeah, by myself before my six-year-old got home from school. <laughs> so it's it's been a day. It's uh, Well, it's been a couple of days that have all kind of blended together at yes. this point. But I'm in a good mood. I'm in good spirits. Right. Uh, I'm just a little sore and a little slow. See, you know, we, we are both like that. Just mine from booze and you're from an actual <laughs> That's right. ailment. That's right. <laughs> So anyway, uh, thank you all for joining us tonight. Uh, I got a couple shout outs. Uh, hi guys, gonna grab a beer. Go ahead and Go grab get, one. get that get that going. We're we're stalling long enough for you. Uh, let's see, darling younglings. Uh, yeah, got got a got a youngling slaughtering some younglings tonight. I see. Uh, uh, alcohol, very descriptive. I like uh, that type. Yep, drinking raspberry svedka and uh, sarnak orange cream. Hmm. Awesome. 
uh, Nuclear Free Zone IPA by Big Grove Brewery. I've never heard of that one. Oh, no. Someone has a Enjoy by 420 by Stone? I want that. Oh, I did, yeah. I want that. Uh, nice price. Yeah, he's uh, usually one of my few regular uh, Twitch Twitch viewers. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm more jealous that he gets it. Unfortunately, here in Oregon, we don't get it. We get it like a month after it gets released. Right. And so we only have three weeks to enjoy, buy, enjoy, buy. Yep, exactly. So, it's, uh, it's like, uh. so. Yep. So let's get to our beer tonight. Let's get to our beer. So we got, we're going dark. We're going dark. We're going yeah. dark. Uh, so we got... Two Imperial Stouts, uh, one can, and a bourbon barrel-aged spice oatmeal Imperial Stout. I think this is like 14... Be, be still my heart. 13.6. Thir- <laughs> just just shot. Only 13.6. They're six. only 13.6. Yeah. Well, what are these? Nine? Still. Yeah, yeah, these are still nines. Uh, so, so these are, are not light beers by no, any means. No, no. Uh, so this one's from Fremont, barrel-aged, uh, and this one had some cinnamon spice to some, it? it just said spice. Oh, so spices they, uh, aged in bourbon barrels. Yeah, they, they yeah. call it the Spice War. Okay. Uh, and then this one is uh, from a Portland brewery, Old Town Brewing. Uh, it's the Figaro Imperial Stout. Uh, this is a, a true Imperial Stout, but it's aged with figs. Ooh. Yeah. That and it sounds... is interesting. I, I, I had this last week for one of my videos. I don't remember which one. Ooh. But uh, it's it's an interesting beer. Hmm. It is well, interesting. which one would you like to open? Um, Boy, they're both going to get better when they get warm. They That's will. the problem. They will. They will. Uh, let's go ahead and save the Fremont okay. for a little later in the show. All right, I'll grab some glasses. All right. Hi, everyone. Hello. Uh, Scott's drinking a two-hearted. Let's see. I have you guys playing on a test box, checking in from a Phenom 2 X4 955. Nice. (laughs) Excellent. (laughs) All right. I was about to reach for a bottle opener. Yeah. No, I like the uh, the label. Oh, yeah, it's a cool label. Uh, So I should probably wait to read this until after I pour, but... A symphony of complexity and richness, strong notes of dense dark chocolate, rich toffee, and roasted malt uh, accompany the sweet fruit character played out by the figs. Higher alcohol warms the belly, and full-bodied richness coats the mouth in a soft blanket. Oh, I mean, I could smell it as I was pouring it. Yeah. It smells great. It has that nice, dark, rich... Like almost toffee, again, figgy, very toffee-like. Uh, there's a couple of notes in here that really express themselves once it gets warmer. Mm-hmm. And and like I said, this stouts always get better when they get warmer. Yes. You, uh, you should serve them at 50, 55. 55, yeah. Um, I think this one recommends 55, yeah. So recommends 55 degrees for for serving. So we're serving this right out of the fridge. I apologize to the stout purists in the audience. I like that a lot. Actually. Yeah, it's it is, um, <clears throat> and and it keeps transforming. Yes, it does. You just went, it's, yeah. it's almost like uh, those Imperials that you're wishing were barrel aged. This almost tastes like it's it barrel almost aged. tastes barrel aged. Almost right. tastes barrel aged, but mm-hmm. it's not. Yeah, and um, it's really good. Yeah, um, you know what I get off this. Is I almost get like the the uh, the Berliner Berliner yeah, Berliner Weiss or the the Hef banana like note to it. I was gonna it. say that. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. I was just gonna. I was thinking yeah. like, ah, oh, he's probably not gonna get on. No, it, no, it, stupid. <laughs> 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 no, it, it's it's like a German style banana. Yes, uh, yes. That, that you get off the, off the real true German Hefs and yes, whatnot. There is. Uh, it, it is, more and it hits a, you in the same point in the flavor yes, that, like that a, those do. It's like a chocolate banana bread. Yes. That's a, uh, actually when I reviewed it. That's exactly how I described it. I said it's like a banana nut bread mm. with a little bit of chocolate behind it. Yep. Yeah, that's what this tastes like. Yep. That's really good. They should have not called it figgy. They should have called it banana chocolate nut oh, bread. Totally, absolutely. I mean, and then everyone would have bought it. Mm-hmm. Very good. Yeah, it, it's uh, honestly, it, I, I'm a I'm a sucker for a big stout for a a, a really complex hearty. Um, you know and. This this fulfilled every expectation I had, Easily. Uh, and it wasn't terribly expensive. I think it was about three to four dollars a can for, for that's three it, to four it, bucks a pint. It, it's a twelve or thirteen dollar four pack. Yeah, that's, so I mean, you're yeah. four bucks a pint on a nine percent beer. Yeah, that's hard to get. No, exactly, and uh, and so it, it was well worth the price yeah, of admission. It, if here. you were to go to a tap room, you'd probably only get twelve ounces of this for six dollars, six or seven dollars. 
Ooh, here's a great question, and then we'll jump into some news. Uh, hey, guys. Uh, I just bought a brand new Strix 1070 on eBay for $70 with free shipping. Out of 100, what are my chances of actually receiving it? Oh, yeah, the seller had three for sale and zero feedback. Um, I don't think there's anything less than absolute zero. No, you're not. Uh, <laughs> so if, if we're on a Kev Kelvin scale, <laughs> uh, it it's... You're not going to get that card. In fact, uh, probably sometime within the next 24 to 48 hours, you will get an email from eBay saying that they have shut down the seller's account and refunded any money that you paid uh, due to suspicious activity on the seller's account. Yep, same thing happened um, to me. I have done this a couple of times where I've uh, tried to follow up my Wish.com video or or bought something that was a little bit sketchy. Uh, I, was, I was looking for a, a GoPro on eBay and I found someone who was selling a GoPro Hero 5 for like $115 or something like that. And he had it, they were refurbished, came oh, with all the original so accessories. It so it, it was trying to and it, it was a price that was low but not like absurdly low. Yeah. Um GoPro Hero right. Black 3 for 50 bucks. Right. All accessories. Yeah, it wasn't one of those, <laughs> but uh but it, it was a GoPro and and everything else and uh I I clicked buy and I went to bed and I woke up in the morning and I had an email from eBay that said if you've paid money, uh go ahead and and request a refund. We'll we'll issue it immediately. If it yeah. was through PayPal, same deal. They'll do the same thing. Um but uh but yeah, no, there there's literally a 0% chance you got a 1070 Strix for $70. Yeah. No, so, same things happened to me. I bought 236 more. If you get a card, uh, it's going to look surprisingly like the uh, the fake GTX 960 that I reviewed last year. Uh, actually, almost like a year ago today oh. was when I did that video. Maybe, so. it's, maybe it's the guy saw the video. It's like, I'm going to go yep. buy a card just like Jeff. Yeah, <laughs> if you receive something, it's going to be like a GTS 450. If you're really lucky and actually receive something. And yeah. even then, you paid about $40 too much. You know what? <laughs> Speaking of luck, though. There were like these two guys in Nebraska mm -hmm. who were like really lucky recently. Yeah. Uh, if a lot of you guys actually don't mm. know, there's this flooding. I like that transition. That was pretty good. That was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I went, where is he going? Oh! oh! <laughs> uh, there was this uh, massive amounts of flooding in Nebraska. Uh, Lincoln, Nebraska, to be more precise. Mm -hmm. uh, people's farms were just getting wiped out yeah they're having generational flooding yeah. over there where uh that they haven't seen floods like this for i think 40 or 45 years or something yeah. like that was the last one that that reached this scale yeah so these guys uh were basically coming off of trying to fix up and you know fix some damaged houses and mm -hmm. property that they were doing and uh their car was like a mile mile and a half away from where they were finishing up work mm -hmm. so they decided to walk back through this you know big empty field mm -hmm. and one of his buddies says hey what's that in the field mm -hmm. and walks over there and it was a refrigerator mm -hmm. and it was full of beer yep ice <laughs> cold beer and so two buddies found this fridge in the middle of a field that was full of beer yep by the way scroll down to the picture yeah. because the picture is awesome so <laughs> There we go. <laughs> yeah, it's just two buddies and not the best beer in the world. Right. It's like Bush Light. Bush Light, a couple of buds. Yeah, so whatever. And it was just a little mini fridge, but still, full of cold beer. That's right. Uh, they ended up finding the guy, the owner of the fridge. Uh, he lived about four miles away. So the, yeah. the fridge full of beer, which those mini fridges are still, you know, 70 pounds, 50 pounds. Mm -hmm. And then you're... Full of beer, which from one of the this top right picture right here mm -hmm. looks pretty full. Yeah, no, it was jam packed. Yeah, so that's about that, how my fridge looks downstairs right yeah, now. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> close to about a hundred pounds, I bet. Yep, getting pushed away four miles like it was yep. nothing. Yep. So, so that's kind of a. I thought that was a really cool beer news. Yeah. <laughs> there wasn't a whole lot this week that happened in the beer, beer community, mm -hmm. but this was a very. Uh, Nice, nice hearted, good feeling yeah. beer. After a long, hard day's work, mm -hmm. something, even the flooded provided them cold, ice cold beer. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it kind of goes hand in hand with like finding a really good beer in the mm -hmm. store and, and just being surprised at it. I mean, this is one that I was totally surprised with where I, I, I bought it and went, it's probably a decent stout. Maybe has like a little nut or berry yeah. taste to it or kind of that, that Fig Newton kind of thing. Not even close. Oh, so surprised no, on this, this one. Is, this is a good beer. This is yeah. actually one I would might even go back. Like I got some extra cash. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go buy another four pack of this. Yeah, and this is my go-to. I need a night off stout. Right. Like, 
All right, I'm right. chilling, relaxing. I'm done filming or editing, mm. and I want a big hearty beer. A yep. lot of times at night, I find myself more wanting a dark beer yes. than an IPA. Absolutely. Or, or something. I want a, either a barley wine or a big stout. Yep. Uh, if, if I'm between that that like lunch and dinner period or even like immediately after dinner, I, I'm in the, the Belgian or the IPA mm -hmm. or... Um, or beers like that, uh, maybe even a sour, depending on what I'm eating. Yeah. Um, once I've filmed and once I'm like into editing or getting late at night, you know, it's, it's nine o'clock and, and I'm not ready for bed. I've got another two to three hours of editing still. It's like, I, I want to drink. I will either go for a cocktail or a stout, or I will just pour myself a little snifter of whiskey yeah. and just kind of, just kind of sip. I, I think what it is, is, is like the whiskey or a stout, like we were saying earlier, the complexity of it really comes out as it warms up. And with this, you don't chug down big gulps. You just slowly sip it and you let the complexity build up in it. Um, the flavors become more prominent. You get to dig around with it. It's very nice. It's not a chugging beer. Jeff's over there messaging away. Yeah. Um, boy, what are my... Something's down? No, we're not down. We've got 47 people watching. Um... I think the notification for my live show for YouTube uh, was broken by default because uh, my page didn't load when I when I started the show. I had to refresh, and I heard a couple of people say they had to refresh as well. I'm getting reports from Twitch right now from a couple of people that uh, that the YouTube stream is down. I think the link to that Jeff went live. Uh, I think that link is broken. So if you just Google your your if if you channel. just go to to YouTube.com. Slash, uh, excuse me, slash, slash craft, C slash craft computing slash live. Uh, it'll, it'll load it'll up. Uh, so YouTube transitioned me over from the old creator uh, page to the new studio beta, uh, I think I on Monday. Yeah. And I actually had some problems configuring my live stream for tonight. I don't like um, it. Yeah, it, it's got some cool analytics to it, but I... It's yeah. harder to find some of the features that I was using. And in fact, some of them are just straight up missing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, They're all hidden. Half of yeah. them are hidden. It, it seems to be more of a studio base for a entry level yes. uh, person. It, it's dumbed down, which is nice in a way. But I, I have the same complaint with the studio beta that I that I do with the Windows 10 control panel. Mm. Is, <laughs> is Microsoft had a pretty decent UI when it came to the Windows 95 through Windows 8.1 control panel. And in Windows 10, they decided to go with the modern UI Metro style look to it. And in doing so, they didn't move all of their features over to the new control panel. So there's still some things you have to go to the old control panel settings to do. Sometimes the settings are in two places. Sometimes this setting only changes half of the thing yes. you want. You still oh. have to go flick the other switch. And it, it's just, Microsoft, this is not that difficult make all of the things available by default or don't switch. Well, and YouTube, make everything available by default that people use or don't switch. Yeah. It, Where's my rant counter? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, am I Rhett? Yeah. <laughs> Rhett, you look a lot better than usual. Ah, thank you, yes. <laughs> Your dancing's gotten worse, though. Uh, have to trade something. That's right. <clears throat> <laughs> All right. Uh, odd worked for me right away, and I was notified 17 minutes ago. Yeah, I, I think some of it's broken, some of it's not. Yeah. It's just interesting. Hashtag float plane. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. Okay, next up. Yeah. Let's get into some Intel news. There we go. So, uh... <sighs> We all know what's coming with, with Ryzen here in the next couple of months. Uh, we all know that they're coming out with, at the very least, an 8-core Ryzen with a single chiplet with room yeah. for a second one. Uh, or they're probably coming out with either a 12 or a 16-core variant for desktop that's going to be pretty darn affordable, especially compared to like a 9900K yeah. at 550 bucks. Um, Intel has a little bit of a leak going on right now. It is rumored to uh, leak. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We, it's a leak. Oh, we turned the faucet on. Oh, no. How did I drop that paper? Oh. 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 Yeah. Ten? <laughs> yeah. Ten cores? Who saw that coming? Yeah. Uh, 
So Intel is rumored right now to be coming out with a 10 core variant of their Skylake plus, 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 plus architecture. So oh. this is not 10 nanometer. This is still 14 yeah. nanometer. Uh, I don't know how many pluses they can possibly tack onto it. Uh, but this is going to be Comet Lake processors that may arrive later this year. Uh, and unfortunately, that's about all we know that's on them. That's all they really right. said that it could. Right. Um, there's some rumblings up in the air about what graphics processor are they going to be using on board. Is it going to be GT1 or GT2 uh, level processing? And everyone goes, who cares? It's still onboard graphics. We're not going to get Intel dedicated graphics cards for another two years. So, uh, yeah, yeah it, it it doesn't matter. Is it max 10 core? Is it what, what is it going to be? Right. It, it's probably 10 core, 20 thread. Yeah. Um, but if you all remember back to the CES uh, press conference where AMD teased Zen 2 performance, uh, they had an 8 core, 16 thread pretty much Ryzen 5 level chip matching a 9900K. Now that's stock speeds. We don't know what the overclocking headroom no. is yet. Um, but uh, there's there were some significant gains with Zen Plus with overclocking. Dropping the architecture down to 7 nanometer, I, I can't imagine we're not going to get any more gains out of that. Uh, I can't imagine we're going to go backwards in, in memory controller for, for no. memory speed as well. Uh, so there's a pretty good chance that that Ryzen's going to kick the 9900K's butt. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Especially. Well, it's the price point. It's it's the, the variance of the, whether it's 9 core or 10 core, because the 9900K is what? It's 8, and I think they have a 10 core? Uh, no. Uh, well, they, they have they have 10, 12, 14, yeah, 16, yeah. 18 cores in but the high-end desktop. The, 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 yeah. But for the consumer the level consumer chips, level. they top out at 8. Right. So, so yeah. Uh, Although the only th the funny thing reading this article, I kept sitting there for some reason when it said Skylake, I kept saying Skynet. Skynet. <laughs> Skynet. 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 Skynet processors? Yeah, there's just Skynet processors. Like, oh, it's happening. <laughs> it's happening now. Yeah. <laughs> uh... Your ad blocker is horrible on that one. Yeah, I know. Um, there really wasn't a whole lot because everything else in this article is all pure speculation. Yeah, and, and everything is speculation. Like I said, there, there's the, the 9820X, which is a 10-core high-end desktop chip yeah. with quad-channel memory, which is the main benefit right now of not buying a yeah. 7820X and getting a 9900K, is getting uh, uh, quad-channel memory. Um, but... Uh, yeah... Well, then they just kept speculating. Well, is this going to be the 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 high end, low end desktops? Uh, are they going to have? Is this going to be for mobile too? Are they going to have this style, this particular chip in mobile variances mm -hmm. with less cores? They were just. This article literally was just going off. On it was very speculative. It was just speculative. Yeah. Oh, and now it's going to be competing against. This is a. And by the way, this is the best article that I could find with this yeah. rumor in it. <laughs> <laughs> Blatant AMD Zen two. Architecture is gonna kick the crap out of the the yeah. Ryzen three hundred series. Yeah. Okay, but whatever. Yep. You know. Yeah. Uh, I I think we're pretty well established that Intel is going to have a hard time competing with AMD up and coming processors unless they can get below the fourteen nanometer mark, no. um, or they find some way to uh, multi-thread only single-threaded processes. But even then, a lot of modern processes, especially as far as gaming goes, are using multiple threads already. So we're not we're not bottlenecked in the sense that we're running out of raw speed. We're bottlenecked in the sense that Intel has hit their mark, and AMD is come is up and coming. And this might be the mark where they pass them again. Remember, yes. they've passed them a couple times in the past. So yeah, usually when they pass them a couple times in the past, there's always been rumors that Intel has something that, that they've got there. something cooking. They got some, yeah, there is nothing there was ever sounds. There's no rumors. <laughs> this might be the thing that they're saying is cooking, and this is not good. This is right. It still hits the wall. Right. This moves them inches, not miles or feet. Right. A, a perfect way to put it. Uh, you know, it, it's it, in the past. AMD has passed for a generation of processors for for an 18 month. Yeah. rolling year uh and they did it with the uh with gosh what was that the 754 socket the amd 
Athlon 3000 Plus. And they also beat Intel to the one gigahertz mark as well, which was kind of un, uh, yeah. insane back in the day. The um, yeah, bit. early 2000s. Yeah, uh, it was 99, I believe, that yeah. that AMD crossed the one gigahertz mark, uh, beat the Pentium 3 there. Uh, and then, yeah, the Athlon 3000 came out and just kicked the living hell out of the Pentium 4 for the day. Um, but then Intel goes, well... Yeah, well, we've got the you know the the Pentium sitting right there, the Pen- Pentium Four Extreme Edition, mm. three point six gigahertz chip. What if we added another core onto that? Oh, here's a duo. Here, here, here's a core duo. Oh, and we're gonna make it sixty four bit as well and call it a core two duo. Yeah. Uh, and and so they had that counter, and then AMD was competitive through through most of that two thousand seven to to two thousand eleven lifespan. Uh, Never really beating them outright. Maybe have like a couple was, of months it was on a them. Price point issue for AMD. It was a price. Point. It was a price point yep. for AMD. Yep. It, it was always better value. Maybe not as fast, but better value. But better, yeah. You you um, could buy a better graphics card or something. Save that hundred dollars on that chip and buy the better right. graphics card. Back when the most expensive graphics card was four hundred and thirty dollars. Yeah. God. <laughs> I wish. When well, yeah, your whole PC bill back, was five hundred bucks. Back when I bought two of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, hmm? Back then, when you needed two of them. Back then, when two of them actually worked together. <laughs> <laughs> um. But uh, fast forward to modern day, and and AMD goes, "Oh, we're up and coming, and we're getting ready to kick your butt." We're gonna double up the core count and and beat you in IPC as well. And Intel goes, yo, I got two more cores. Yeah. That's all they have. That's their answer right now. Uh, so still just a rumor. I got two more and the same size. Maybe maybe they won't even have ten cores. Maybe it won't work. But uh, yeah, ten cores supposedly coming to Intel consumer level chips. Yeah, consumer what spring summer? Uh, they said sometime this year. <laughs> yeah. Even less vague. Yeah. Yep. Uh, what was yeah. the exact wording on it? Uh, up, uh, upcoming processor launch, uh, maximum of 10 cores, which is believed, believed to be based on the Skylake microarchitecture, will utilize 14 nanometer process uh, to succeed the current uh, i9-9900K chipset. That's it? Yep. Even as you said it, though, I still said, I heard Skynet. Yep, Skynet. It's kind of architecture. Yep. Well, it, it became self-aware. Now they can't get beyond it. <laughs> can't kill that. <laughs> All right. Uh, moving into some news that's kind of near and dear to my heart that we've talked about a number of times, and that is the right to repair. Uh, Prepare for another rant, people. No, I'm, I'm going to try to make this one not as ranty. Oh, okay. Uh, more just support the movement uh because it's it's overall good for everyone it, yes. it's it's bad for apple it's bad for samsung it's bad for htc uh but it's good for everyone else yes. so and the reason i say it's bad for apple is they can't overcharge you for repairs anymore that's why it's bad yes so yeah oh apple has to play by the rules now oh so but california california has become now the 20th state, mm-hmm. 20th, it's almost half of them already, yep. uh, to introduce the right to repair bill this year in California. So they're basically uh, repealing the nationwide right to repair, or uh, what was Not it? necessarily, because sure. right now... Um, Right now, there is no le- there's no legislation on what is the consumer's right to repair their own products. Uh, there is in the automotive industry, which is why you can buy OEM parts or you can buy non-OEM parts. Yep. And you can buy them from anyone and you can take your car to anyone and have it serviced anywhere. Now, that's outside of like warranty constraints or something like that. If you buy a car from a dealership, you have to take it to the dealership to be serviced to maintain your warranty. That's still probably going to be a thing under right to repair. Yeah. Um, you know, if your, if your iPhone breaks or not breaks, but goes bad in the first year of service, you take it to Apple to have it repaired with Apple. Yeah. Um, if you take it somewhere else, your warranty is null and void. That's, that's well understandable. What the automotive industry has is you cannot close source your parts. You cannot say, uh, you know what, Toyota, we ship with only Michelin tires. And if you put anything besides a Michelin on your car, you will void the warranty. Yeah. Nope. Sorry. Uh, 
right now the automotive industry has protections in place to allow you to repair your vehicle using any method you deem worthy, uh, using genuine or non-genuine parts uh, at any repair shop and and still have your vehicle serviced at a dealership. Um, and you're not going to get in trouble for selling OE, non-OEM parts if you're, if you're a repair shop or a dealer or anything like that. You can say, hey, look, we've got a Nissan air filter that comes from, from direct from Nissan and or what's a better example? Uh, the, uh, uh, tell you what, muffler. muffler we'll, we'll go muffler. Transit. We'll go, we'll go right. muffler. Uh, we, we've got we've got a muffler that you can buy direct from Nissan. It's an OEM replacement. It's the same exact process that they used on the part that went into your vehicle originally. We'll call it four hundred dollars. We also have a full array of mufflers that start at seventy dollars and go up to four hundred. And you can buy you can pick any of those you want. And if no. you put it in your car, it's not going to void your warranty at all. Nope. Yep. The only thing that's no longer warranted is the, the muffler. muffler, unless you bought that four hundred dollar one. Right. Exactly. So similar to all of that, why is my talking heads thing going nuts? I don't know. Anyway, um, so the right to repair is the right of the consumer to seek parts and services for their own devices, uh, regardless of, of it, if it's consumer electronics or not, because one of the big uh, antagonists of right to repair is John Deere tractors. Yes. Uh, well, we talked about that earlier. Too. We, we've talked about that as well before, um, where John Deere will lock down uh, the tractor and say, "We need a John Deere tech to come out to your tractor and use to, John Deere software and use John Deere proprietary software." And that's how they're locking it. They're saying um, that uh, the hardware is not proprietary. You can put whatever you want yeah. in the tractor, but the software to run it, you need a John Deere certified tech to come to your tractor, or you can bring the tractor in. That's fine. Yeah. Who, yeah, I'll just load the, the yeah. combine onto the back of my truck here. Uh, well, I think they're probably even doing it with like high end lawnmowers or something. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. But, but, uh, but speaking of like heavy farm equipment, time is money and, and time is like yearly earn, earn or loss income. Yeah. Think of all the hop farms that we have around oh, here. Oh, yeah. Hop farms, wheat, but where it's of... literally a two week harvest yeah. season. That's all you have. That's all you have. Uh, and so when it's harvest time, August 1st, you have until August 14th to get them off the vine. Otherwise it's gone. Yeah. It's... And, and that's your yearly income for yeah, a lot so of these if your tractor is down for three to four hours, mm -hmm. even 24 hours, that's mm -hmm. a whole day's worth of work. You're basically working night. Right. Right. Exactly. And, and, and that's the issue with, with that is, is John Deere is locking down who can repair and, and, and who can service and operate their tractors. Well, what if you're Joe Blow, 30 mile or let's say 100 miles from the nearest John Deere dealership, uh, and and the service guy goes, oh, you know, it's harvest season. I'm kind of busy right now. I can't get you for three days. Well, I might as well just declare bankruptcy now. Yeah. Oh yeah. I I'm sorry. Uh, you're fired. And you're fired. And you're fired. Yep. yep. You know, or or yeah, <laughs> you know, laid off. Whatever you want to say. But. Right. Um, as it relates to consumer electronics, if you have a cell phone and your screen breaks, if you take it to if you have an iPhone and you take it to Apple, that can be up to a five or six hundred dollar repair. Sometimes even the price of the phone. Right. For let's take an iPhone 6S for example, that's still a three hundred dollar repair with Apple right now. Well, you can buy a brand new 6S for three hundred bucks. Yeah. Do you know what the screen actually costs? Oh, 15, 20 bucks. Thirty dollars shipped to me direct to my yeah. door from any. Yeah. <laughs> from any Amazon. And seller. so, but the guy that repairs phones down the street, he mm -hmm. can't replace it for you. Right. Right. There's a lot of, there's a lot of repair companies out there that do, but the problem is Apple is claiming copyright violations. They're claiming trade violations. They're claiming uh, import export violations. They are seizing hardware through customs uh, to prevent third party parts or re manufactured or recertified or not recertified, but refurbished parts yeah. from entering the market. Um, China has a huge third party market for literally brand new o or OEM parts that were taken off of broken phones and they'll, they'll take the screen and the digitizer off and they'll sell that or, or clean it up and, and whatnot. Or, Hey, we, it's a bad ribbon cable. Let's replace the ribbon cable and then sell that. What about Huawei? Uh, Huawei. Huawei. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 
Um, but anyway, there's a huge market in China for, for stripping phones of their parts and then refurbishing those parts and then selling them back to the West. Oh yeah. I mean, how many times do you go on eBay and be like parts only thing, parts, mm -hmm. parts only this, parts only that, because there are people out there that are like, I know how to fix this myself. Mm -hmm. Or there's that little shop saying, I need that little part for my customer right. XBY, you know, whatever mm -hmm. I need inventory. I need to go buy those parts. If Apple is now stating, Hey, you can't buy that anymore. Right. You can't sell that. And the only way you're going to be able ever to get it is you got to buy it from us. Right. And then still, it's not under warranty, mm -hmm. even if you do it. Right. Uh, that's horse bunny. You yep. Know, whatever. Uh, by the way, Apple, in a counter move this week, I, I forgot to put this article in, actually said, we will now service iPhones that don't have first party batteries in them. And I don't know if you remember my rant from last oh, year. Yeah. Well, with your personal experience. When, when they refused to service my iPhone because it had a third-party battery in it. Oh, I got hot. I yeah. got heated. Um, it ended your relationship. Yeah. There's a reason I don't own an Apple product anymore. I don't. I sold my Mac Pro. I sold... Uh, uh, I, I got rid of a, a number of Macs. Uh, oh, you get rid of that tower that you... Yeah. Oh, that, so, was, a, that was a sweet tower. It was. I really liked it, but, uh, well, Apple hasn't made a tower that nice for, I don't know, seven years now. <laughs> yeah, wasn't it like an icon? So it wasn't just the service factor that was, uh, souring my relationship with Apple. It was Apple as a whole and the way their, their business goes right now. But, uh, but yeah, so let's say you have an iPhone and you take it to Apple, $300 for, for a screen repair. You take it anywhere else and they go... Oh yeah, it's thirty dollars for the part and maybe thirty five in labor. It'll take me about an hour. Yeah. Hey, you want to go down to the mall kiosk, have a churro, and come back? Well, that's what it used to be. I I remember mid mid two thousands. How many mall shops were report, phone repair, mm -hmm. electronic repair places? Yep. And it was just a guy who would be like, oh, I'm in there with you know the mm -hmm. binocular glasses or mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. So to it. Yep. And you would hand him your phone. And you're like, I'm gonna go have lunch or go yep. shopping. By the time you're done. And just hey, there you go. Yep. You know, that, that little computer nerd guy is like, I, I don't really know how to do stuff, but I know how to do this. Right. I, it would be killing it. So so Apple is claiming, well, you're not going to get the same quality parts. That's the decision of the consumer to make, not the decision of the device maker to make. The, the device maker, once that sale has been made, you can sell them more services if you want to enhance your product. But once that sale is made, the onus is on the consumer of whether or not it is worth the worth it to them to buy genuine parts or non-genuine parts and where to have it serviced at. This is my item though. Right. Yeah. There, there are a number of cases where OEM isn't the best option. Look no further than the automotive world. Look no further than, than cars that have uh, uh, air intakes where it'll eat the filter, but if you use a different air intake, it'll oh, yeah. all mean, of a that, sudden work. That's what third party small businesses do. They're mm -hmm. like, look, we see a need the market. This makes their car or their product mm -hmm perform better right or equal but with less pay you know right. or less cost mm -hmm. to the consumer why do that that's why they even started that business in the first place right now you can also get bad parts look no further than roadkill and some, yes. some of the crappy electric water pumps that they yeah, use yes yeah. I, I, I get that <laughs> I mean, that's the other half of the chinese market but again that's the decision for the consumer to make my phone is not property of Apple or, or Essential or Samsung or whoever you have. It is not their property anymore. And they have no say in how I get it repaired and who I use to repair it. So uh, right to repair legislation. Uh, California is the 20th state to, uh, to propose such legislation. Um, Last year, there were 19 states that were fighting for it. And in fact, uh, one passed, I believe in Minnesota, passed a right to repair uh, it here initiative. Uh, it, there's it legislation for... present, present. Um, but I, I don't know if it passed or not. Yeah, because um, like the 19 other states, they're Hawaii, but, Indiana, blah, blah, blah. Right, blah, blah. but California is the big one because remember, Apple's corporate headquarters are in, in California. Silicon Valley, yeah. Uh, I mean, you, you've got HP, you've got yeah. Samsung. I mean, you've yeah, got, well, that's the whole point. You have Silicon Valley right there. All these tech, these innovative companies, right. the small companies too. Right. Like what we were talking about. Right. They're all trying to do stuff like this. And if you're taking that... Uh, away from them. Mm -hmm. I mean, heck, even a small company, how many of those small companies sit there probably have a brand new iPhone and the guy's like, oh crap, I just brought, dropped my phone. I gotta go drop a 
a thousand dollars to go have my phone repaired right now right that's eating into my comp my startup company's mm -hmm. budget right that i can't really afford right now right absolutely um just a second uh iphone x screen replacement only 279 any other damage 549 549 dollars uh, if if there is any other damage to your phone, uh, what Apple does when they're doing a screen repair is they'll repair your screen for you, but they'll also put it into like a laser scanner. And if there is any deformation uh, deformation of any of the edges of that that thing, it is now a chassis repair as well, which also comes with a logic board, which yep. also comes with this, which also comes with so that. So you've ever dropped your phone? Yeah. Without the case on it, possibly dinged it, scratched it, mm -hmm. whatever. Doesn't matter if it did if it's not factory default setting. Right. If specs. it is not factory perfect yeah. as far as the physical condition, if there's an if there's a, a little ding on the corner, the screen may still fit fine. But if there's a ding on the corner, sorry, we got to replace that too. Yeah, they. That's the other crappy thing is now they they're saying they have to replace right. it. Corporate policy, we Corporate, have to replace we have it. To do it. Yep. So it, it then it comes down to just buy a new phone. Right. And that's what they're trying to get you to do. They're yeah. trying to either gouge you for the repair cost, which I guarantee doesn't cost $549 to repair no iPhone. No. Uh, look no further than uh, Scotty from uh, Strange Parts. You can build your own iPhone for less than $540. Yeah. <laughs> um, off found parts. Uh, but, uh, but they're trying to either gouge you on that repair to make, honestly, double the money that they would have made off a new sale anyway, or get you to buy the next phone. Yeah, I, I think most of this, a lot of this is geared toward the people with the last year's, previous year's, older models mm -hmm. is they know everything's dinged. They know things are going to be damaged and they know those parts are wanted and they just want consumers to buy mm -hmm. the latest version and right. spend that and go into debt and payment plans. Yeah. And, and for people saying, ouch, uh, on the screen repair, it was also $649 for an iPhone 8. Yeah. Or, or uh, sorry, uh, $349. So it was $100 less, but... <laughs> Yeah, it, it, not not good, not good. Support right to repair legislation. Support repair cafes as they move out throughout the country because there's some uh, bring there's some really cool ones. There's some uh, bring your own device to get repaired, uh, where they will have repair experts standing by with all the necessary tools and equipment and possibly replacement parts. If you find one of those, there, it, even if you don't have any, it's really mm -hmm. cool to go to those. It's like a flea market of guys, uh, gurus that totally. just. It, it's not just. Phones. It's like toasters, vacuums. This reminds me everything. of of the the early to mid '90s computer geek meetups where where it was swap meet stuff. Yeah. Where where you meet up and, and a guy goes, uh, Hey, what do you do? Oh, I I do nothing but uh, but iPhone sevens. I have any iPhone seven part you could ever want. I've got all the tools. I've got yeah. all the expertise. Give I know iPhone seven. Twenty minutes. I'll have it fixed. Right. You know? uh, or or the old. Uh, uh, transponder radio guys. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Tubes. You got this. I got that right. tube. I got this tube. I right. got whatever you need. Right. You know. Uh, but yeah, if you ever find those like um, repair fairs or mm -hmm. pop up um, like flea market almost style esque yeah. things, they're just really cool to go to as mm -hmm. well because just some sometimes they even have stuff for sale. But it is really cool. You can see guys tearing apart vacuums. Right. Of like. I didn't know my Dyson did that. And mm -hmm. why, why did my my brand new $600 Dyson s s not as good as it used to be? Mm -hmm. He's like, oh, click this, click this, filter there, filter there, this thing, they're going to go. Yep. 50 bucks. Yep. You know, and exactly. you have a brand new Dyson vacuum again or, or yep. microwave or whatever, coffee pot. Speaking of microwave, the two and the nine buttons stopped working on my microwave this week. <laughs> <laughs> just two and nine the thing is so if, so if i want two minutes i have to either go uh, uh 158 <laughs> oh i always i always just because mine has the, the 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 quick one minute or the quick 30 seconds yeah so i'm just i those are the only two buttons so if those two ever <laughs> quit i don't type anything else <laughs> no it, it, it's always divisible by 30 seconds it's like 30 seconds yep that's that's perfect or yep. no i need one minute okay and then I need more. One, two, three, four, five, six, 20 minutes. <laughs> six, six, See, I'm a, I'm a microwave scientist, so I get pretty exact with some of my oh, things. No. Where, where I'm like a minute 10 if you're cooking this and it's oh, at this temperature no, going in. Oh, no, yeah. No. Oh, yeah. See, <laughs> see, when I'm with that, I'm like, I'm looking at, oh, 15 seconds. Left. Pop it up. There we go. Yep. We're done. Yep. 
I, I'm more of an ear guy. I'm like, oh, I hear it sizzling. That's yeah. <laughs> You're also the burnt popcorn in the lunchroom. Hey, hey, the rest yeah. of it is fine. Yeah. You put yeah, but no, no, you, you put you're enough butter. You're the burnt popcorn in the company lunchroom guy. No, I'm not that guy. I actually, yes, yes, no, no, you no, no, I no, bet I, you I, are. I'm the opposite. I'm the I'm the guy with the. Oh, you're the tuna fish guy. Uh, no, 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 I'm not that guy. I'm the guy with the popcorn, but I have I've only popped half, and so I have a whole bag left, and I'm like, ugh, there's a throw. Mm-hmm. You know, I have just a bunch of kernels at the bottom <laughs> that I'm just sucking on because it's been soaked in the butter yeah. of the bag. But the bag only got half full because yeah. I was like, I don't want to burn it. I want the extra butter. <laughs> that's that's the cup of guy. That also sounds like you. Yeah, that, that's me. <laughs> that I, also I want like the fatty you. flavor. That's right. I do two uh, bags of popcorn. <laughs> channel to check out AVE if, uh, and you'll find out. Keep your dick in a vice. That's all I can say about that one. <laughs> I don't know that reference, but now I want to look it up. AVE. Look him up. Yep. Okay. Yep. Tonight. Yep. Yeah. You, know, <laughs> you will enjoy AVE. Uh, don't watch with your wife in the room. <laughs> Maybe I want to. Yeah. <laughs> that got creepy. Yes. All right. All uh, right. Um, cloud gaming. Speaking of smooth transitions. Smooth. Yeah, keep know, your dick in a vice, Google. <laughs> This is, um, I don't, Ooh. I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what to think about this. I don't know what to think yeah. about this. I, I, I was hoping you'd come in with a strong opinion. I don't, but that, <laughs> I, I, I like the idea. Mm-hmm. This also kind of reminds me of, remember, I don't know, it, you were a bit younger, but remember when games were like TV channel cable subscriptions? Oh, uh, Sega TV. Yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Well, even older, they had older ones back when, like, Super Nintendo and regular Nintendo. Uh, Super Nintendo had a subscription service in Japan that was very similar, where you could play exclusive games for for a certain set of time that you would download yeah. from, from a cable. Um, in fact, there's an unreleased Zelda game that the U.S. never got oh, really? that was only available on the Japanese subscription service. Hmm. Uh, some people have tried emulating it with a ROM, and so there is a ROM that you can download so you can play it. But uh, it had live voice acting. Oh. Uh, oh, was that the, like, it, it was, it almost looked like Zelda 2, but then it had a bunch of cartoon No, no, no. Actors. No, it was uh, Link to the Past, Zelda. Oh, really? It, it was uh, SNES, Zelda. Uh, it was the same map, but it was a different game. Uh, and there was live voice acting and different dungeons. And, that would be fun. Yeah, yeah, it was, it's a trip. Um this kind of Google's play on cloud-based mm-hmm. live internet kind of almost to me feels like that of like, I really hope it's going to be good. Yeah. I really hope it's going to be like this, but I have half of me saying it's going to be garbage. Yeah. Uh, it, it just can't handle what it is. The big thing is, is the, the broadband mm-hmm. aspect. Yes. That's what kills yes. me is, yeah. is, I, I gotta pay a premium to play for my uh, internet company to play this really high end game at the graphics level that my box could handle it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but then all of a sudden, someone else in my family wants to stream a 1080p video or 4K video. Yep. Someone else is doing that too, and then all of my bandwidth just gets sucked up. Yep. Instead of me buying a forty dollar game that yep. would be completely local and fun. Right. Exactly. No. Um. Here's. Here's the bugaboo with cloud gaming. It does work. It works. There, there, have com- there are companies out there that have proven that it, it kind of works. Um, the problem itself is not bandwidth. The problem itself is not, oh man, that's going to take so much bandwidth. You mm-hmm. better have a lot of download. We can stream 4K Netflix at 4.5 megabit. We can stream 4K HDR Netflix at 10. Uh and so, and and a lot of people have 10 megabit. Not everyone, FCC, uh, but but a lot of people in this country have at least 10 megabit. Most most of them have more than that. Yeah. Um. You know, I'm kind of talking about outliers when I'm talking about less than 10. Um. But uh, there's a good number of people who have 50, 100, 300 meg connections. Uh, and then gig is becoming more and more popular. I'm actually getting gig fiber in a couple months. Oh, you suck. Yay! Uh, they've been digging outside my house for two weeks, so uh, I have a, a a fiber box in the ground now, right outside my house. The hub is in my is I'm in surpri- my yard. I'm surprised you're not doing a craft computing chronicle of it. 
And be uh, like, the day we launch, let's go! No, uh, <laughs> but but mine is not like, like the CenturyLink fiber where it's fiber optic internet, at least to the corner of your street, and then we're yeah. going to run copper the rest of the way, and yeah. you're going to share that line with 30 other houses. Uh, I get light in my house. Oh. I, I get a fiber optic cable drop in my house. <laughs> it's not copper until I make it copper. <laughs> so I'm excited. Um <clears throat> And sorry, a little side note. Uh, they were really, really mad when they were digging my box because uh, they're doing uh, basically fiber splice points about every fourth house. Mm -hmm. uh, well, my house, my front yard has the cable splice point that, that's in the front. So they, they, I have all the underground utilities oh, okay, in my house. So yeah. um, uh, you get all the repair trucks in front of you. Yes. Uh, so I, I have the the underground electric box in my in my front driveway. I've also got the uh, the the cable box that's there, and now I have the fiber box for the neighborhood <laughs> too, uh, for the cul-de-sac. Jeff controls it all. Right, but uh, but they were uh, the crew came through. They they had like five trucks that were coming through, and they were installing these boxes yeah. in the ground, getting ready to uh, to set the points where they were going to bore two, and. Uh, I guess there were five trucks on my block and uh, all of them had like dug the hole, put the box in, refilled the dirt, made it look all pretty. Uh, the guy out front in my house was out there the entire time cussing and swearing and, and whatnot because I have a cherry tree out in front of my house. All the room. And so he's sitting there with an, with an ax and a shovel going, God damn, God damn, God damn, God damn. <laughs> This is a kid-friendly <laughs> show, people. Yeah, um, yeah. He was not happy trying to install that underground box in my in my <laughs> front yard, but it's in there now, and uh, they're actually marked on the street for the boring. So the boring should happen in the next couple of weeks. Ooh. Yeah. So we're getting close. Uh, How anyway, did you get it before Woodbury. Like, I don't whatever, know. I got it. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, the problem itself is not bandwidth. I know that was a long tangent. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Coming back. Um, the problem itself is not how much data can you download because most people can download a lot of data. The problem is your latency to these services. Latency is not a thing to worry about with Netflix or with video deliverance mm -hmm. or audio deliverance or anything like that. You can get that deliverance pretty darn quick. Um, and, and, you know, if you're four seconds behind a stream, who cares? On, on YouTube right now, Everyone on YouTube is watching my live stream with probably about a 15 second update. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, as far as the variance in when the pixels are actually getting to your monitor. Um, gaming. With gaming, latency is everything. Oh, yeah. Latency is above, picture quality <laughs> is above. Pop. Ah, oh, I yeah. got shot before I even. Right. <laughs> Did, do you remember playing uh, first person shooter games on dial up? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could play strategy games on dial-up because a, a half second doesn't make or break no, your game. Yeah. Um, I, I know I just pissed off a lot of Warcraft fans, but whatever. Uh, half <laughs> I was going to say Warcraft, Starcraft, yeah. Right, uh, yeah, Starcraft. I, I played Starcraft online on dial-up. Yeah. Um, but uh, a half second or a quarter second, you know, 250 milliseconds in a strategy game doesn't impact your gameplay. In a first-person shooter, nine milliseconds impacts your gameplay oh, yeah. because sometimes those windows are that tight yeah and yeah, I ran behind a wall right whatever do me a favor right now uh ping google.com and post what your average ping time is in the chat right now i want to see them come in so open a command window and type ping google.com i want to see these results live uh, i will do that myself in fact PingGoogle.com. So if you're on Windows, it'll send four pings, and then it'll give you an average response time down below. Okay? So I'm going to start off by saying my average response time from Google.com is 16 milliseconds. It took 16 milliseconds for my signal to reach Google and then reach back. Yep. Which means... I'm at the very least eight milliseconds delayed on an, on an, on an input. Now that's moderate yeah as far as um uh trick logic 16 there we go we're getting some uh, some responses in um eight milliseconds is what you would expect on you know not a high-end gaming monitor but your average walmart special 90 dollar monitor yeah. so, sometimes there there's five the, to the, ten the, millisecond response the, time the default monitor there that comes in the kit mm -hmm. the box the box kit of um, right. black friday special deals Nice price, 26, 26 milliseconds. milliseconds yep. 15 milliseconds, 
35 to 38 milliseconds. 103. Ouch. 103. Ouch. 28 milliseconds over Wi-Fi and IPv6. Uh, 40 millisecond. 23 millisecond. 25 millisecond. 3 seconds. <laughs> 104, 17, 48, 26. You notice how only a couple of these numbers were hitting about 15 milliseconds? I, I have a pretty good connection right here. My, my shortest uh, travel time was, was 13. Um, and my pinged over IPv4. But 13 milliseconds was my lowest. 18 was my highest average of 16. That means from an input from me to reach the server... Best case scenario is it gets there in eight milliseconds. Yes. Best case best scenario. Best case scenario. Absolute best case. That's a 64 byte packet going from me to them. Um, think about input in, in, in these games from and... your controller, from your mouse, from your keyboard, along with the other data that you have which, to be sending upstream which, for the game. Which is kind of a funny thing, though, because of the Google. Uh, controller input is a Wi-Fi based yes. controller. Yes, that's the other thing. Yeah. So, uh, so not even hardwired into your USB 3.0, right. anything like that. Do, do me a favor. On yours, open up command prompt. Uh, ping 10.0.1.1. Enter. That is local over Wi-Fi. Now, I've got pretty good Wi-Fi here, um, sure. two milliseconds. Depending on your end, but my point is like 15 feet away, maybe, and mounted in the ceiling and, and a really good access point. Um, think about if you're downstairs on a laptop. Think yeah. about if you're think around if, the corner. Yeah, think think if yeah if you're from where your controller is to where your your access point is. Yeah, and then and then so your router. Say you got a two story house, and your router's upstairs or or downstairs in the living room. You're mm -hmm. upstairs in your bedroom, and you're traveling th through a wall mm -hmm. which probably has cable laid yep. in it. Yep. You know something like that, uh, and you're in a bedroom where your sister, brother, parents probably watching TV or they have a computer and mm -hmm. cable going through them who knows latency you're probably in the 30 40 second latency millisecond latency F found the linux user <laughs> time 17.2 millisecond from linux <laughs> thank you <laughs> gotta get that point in there wow linux never stops pinging that's right uh ping on linux is an ad infinitum it's it's a while true repeat uh thing uh wow mine was better than i thought 10 milliseconds there's someone else that got five but but think about your game response times and and not every game is going to be impacted. Now, Google Stream or Project Stream, which was the the beta project yeah. that that was released April 2018, I believe. Um you could play Assassin's Creed Origins from a Chrome browser tab. And you could play with a mouse and keyboard um or a controller if you have yeah. one plugged in. Um and people said overall pretty decent experience. But that style game isn't necessarily dependent on low level latency. No, uh, it is more of just adventure action. There's some platforming, there's some combat, there's some, but, but your your combat actions can have a 10 millisecond latency well, here and, and there. And half of the combat too is slow down base. Okay, now hit X and it gives you 20 seconds to hit X. You know, yeah, yeah. you know, hit X within the next seven seconds right and you're gonna hit that combo right or or you're gonna parry this attack yeah, exactly. or you're gonna you know, this or that it, it goes into the max pain matrix yeah. slow-mo right you know whatever um so so that's a game that i guarantee you're gonna get a good experience from yeah try playing fortnite try playing call of duty try playing cs go oh, yeah try playing try playing any number any first person shooter and any platformer that you need, like, frame-perfect accuracy. Well, try try playing, like, Meat Boy. Well, that's, it's kind of funny that you said, like, Fortnite. Now, if that's a multi-platform, mm -hmm. you know, version of Fortnite, I, I, I would assume that this will mm -hmm. be the multi-platform version right. of Fortnite. You're going to be playing, possibly, against some people on a PC, direct-connected, mm -hmm. much faster, much better. than, And you're going to be like, what is going on? Mm -hmm. I would wonder the comparison... Versus a, a not even a PC but a console, right? Versus this, right? Um, a wired in console, right? Now Linus Linus has talked quite a few times about uh, TV latency and how every single TV they go, oh, we want to deliver the best po possible picture quality, and so we have a fifty millisecond delay built in for processing. 
Um, and that was a huge thing that John Carmack had to get through when he was developing Oculus Rift was the processing on image controllers. Uh, John Carmack, uh, whatever sandals guy, the other sandals guy is. Uh, Palmer Lucky oh. uh, had, had to get through when developing the Oculus Rift. John Carmack came on later. Uh, was was the the inherent latency built into display controllers? Because if you're consuming media, latency doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're a half second late um, or a full second late in some cases. No. Uh, you're still going to enjoy the movie if it's delivered a half second after the DVD read that. You couldn't that even info. tell. You're That's not a, you're not, not going to know. Tell. You're never going to know. No. Because it's a consistent half second late. The problem is if my gaming input is a consistent half second late, there's a problem. Yeah. I'm not going to enjoy that game. If I'm sitting there having to click and be like, why is my button clicking not equivalent to right. the reaction on the screen? Right. What's wrong with that? And and, and we've all experienced lag on any, any on online not, games. Any, yeah, any kind on of online, online games. Game. Right. Uh, think back to playing Halo on Xbox, on Xbox yeah. Live, and you shoot over here... And and all of a sudden, the same guy that you were shooting at that you Somehow, had you had pixel perfect accuracy on him, and you saw that sniper bolt go through his head. He's now here, and he just shot you with a sniper bolt because yeah. you weren't moving, noob. <laughs> and um, then you call cheater, or, yeah. you know, hack. Yeah. One of kicked off. You talk to the admin, kick him off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so latency is already a problem for local gaming online. What is it going to be like when you at least double that latency? Yeah. Because we're not just talking about sending well, controller inputs and doing all the processing locally. We're now talking about I have to send all of my controller inputs and location data and, and everything else, all the other analytics that go into that streaming service, back up to Google to then process and then send yeah. back to me in a visual image. Well, like you were saying too, uh, you know, it doesn't take too much to do 4K, but they're even saying this can go up to 8K. Mm -hmm. It's potential 8K. Now, that will take a little more and a little longer processing time. So mm -hmm. even there, they're, I assume they're probably doing it for just, hey, you can do it. I bet it's probably going to be like some swimming aqua game. Swim with the dolphins at right. 8K. Right. You know, or... Well, and, and, and I'm not poo-pooing the project no. entirely. No. There's probably a lot of games that would be just fine on this platform. No, and you know what? I think, though... I don't know what the cost or budget would be for mm -hmm. this, but third-party games, Steam games, mm -hmm. something like that. I bet a lot of this stuff, um, and and if you can get a bit more of certain console games, the Assassin Creeds, or mm -hmm. or you know console esque, maybe even the Halo. Well, not Halos because that's still a first from Drew, but more console exclusive developers because they didn't say they said they got a lot of good developers for right. this. Right. Right. Um, those. Console ex uh, exclusive games that don't aren't first person shooters that mm -hmm. are more the adventurous style. Right. I think something like this would be good think because even, it might be cheaper. Think even something up to like a Gears of War. Yeah. Where where it's not a twitch shooter. It's not something that I, I was in like Far Cry. Not Far Cry. Um, what's that adventure one? It's kind of like Indiana Jones. Is that Far Cry? The Indiana Jones. He, look, I know. Well, Far Cry is a good example oh, of, of one that doesn't yeah. necessarily need to be frame perfect. Yeah. Um, still a first person shooter, but, but yeah. Um, but yeah, so as far as like online competitive games, it is never, ever, ever going to work. Yeah, or Lara Croft or whatever. Simply because we're limited by the speed of light. It takes five milliseconds for light for, from here to reach Seattle. Yeah. More than five milliseconds. So, and then you're asking for how many bits of data? Right. You know, exactly. Uh, a cool thing, a very interesting thing. Just nod to gamers everywhere. Yes. That Google did do for their controllers is they put a very special cheat code. Yes. On their controllers. And without even scrolling down, you probably already you, know what that cheat I code is. I knew what it was. I every, know. Every decent gamer knows exactly what it is. I read the title of this and yeah. Google hit a cheat code in their controller. I went Konami code. Yep. Oh, I, was like, <laughs> I was like, up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, A, B, A, B, or start, select. Yeah. I was like, yep. And what did it be? It was up, down, up, up, down, down, left, left right, left, right. B, A, start. Yes. Shame on you for not getting what? right the first time. Oh, I'm time. so sorry. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right. B, A, start. Yes. It still works in ROMs, too. Uh, by the way, uh, try typing this into a lot of websites. Oh, a lot of people use this. A lot A lot of people use this. Uh, I, I run this personally on my corporate side as well with uh, with some code that I... Really? I should, yeah. I should actually do that. Yeah. Because I, I have... 
and I put a in my um, database program. I put in um, a couple of ROMs yes. hidden. Yeah. It's like, hey, if you type Kung Fu Fighting, the old NES, in, in this field, in yeah. all caps, uh, the Kung Fu Fighting NES simulator pops up. Yep. And I had a couple of requests for that, nice. Mario, and, and everything like that. I'm, and in all honesty, they could just go into the server and be like, oh, there's the ROM, there's the executable, right. you know, run that. They don't know how to do it, but it's still fun. Mm -hmm. You know. <laughs> My favorite one that I found was actually on Macy's website, really? the department store <laughs> chain. If uh, There was a short time where if you entered the Konami code, so up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, not, not enter or anything, just yeah. BA, um, it would show up, uh, a Velociraptor would pop up out of the bottom of the screen and then run off the screen. It was just like a static 2D image, but they were wearing hats. So think of like the big hat society. Yeah. Yeah, they were wearing like fan big fancy hats. Oh, big and fan so fan. raptors with fancy hats would pop up and then like scurry off the screen. And then you do it again and you get a different raptor with a different hat. <laughs> I bet the developer <laughs> like, yeah, it's like, yeah. screw me. Watch this yeah. code. Probably took them three days to write. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we already hit our cap. Let's keep yep. going. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, but yeah, no, Macy's is probably my favorite one that I found of all time. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Um, speaking you, of things hidden within the software, uh, you, oh, I was going to say, it's like, uh, you want to finish? Let's, let's stop, stop. What are you thinking of this now that it's warmed up? You know, I'm actually, I'm still enjoying it. Really, really the like it. Uh, the banana ester, the fig, mm -hmm. kind of, kind of does. The, 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 the really, banana fades pretty quick. You, yeah. you have to drink this cold to get that banana. Yeah. Uh, now this is just a good stout that almost hints at I wonder what it would taste like barrel age. Yeah. It would just be phenomenal. This is probably a good candidate for this a barrel is, age. Yeah, this would be right. a very good candidate for barrel aging. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, for all we know, this could be the first batch. And they're like, and we have the other half barrel aged. Right. Barrel aging right now as we speak. And we're waiting until next year to release this. Oh, please. Yeah, right? <laughs> oh, please. This deserves to be barrel aged. Old, Old Town Brewing in Portland, it... Which we've actually talked about before. Yep. Their logo. Yep. Yep, that's right. We had a couple stories on yep. them. Uh, winning the right to use that logo. Yes, that too. Um, you got a, a knife or, or some some form? I mean, I do too, but there we go. I do. Uh, you want to get some stout glasses down? Yeah. Since you grabbed my Pilsners last time. Mm, me, me, me. Mm. Look at that. It's almost like a broken wax seal's been mm. That was a perfect job, actually. That's actually a really good job. <laughs> it's that thick wax. Look at that, it is. too. There we go. Oh, you're not going to like this. No, I'm oh. going to hate it. You're, you're, yeah. I, I'm going to hate it because, it, you know, I didn't already have it on draft and bought two bottles of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll share. And that's all I get. <laughs> that's right. There you go, John. <laughs> <laughs> look, at, look at the head, how dark it is already. I mean, just the foam. is. There's no white. Oh, wow. It's just it's black. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm, I filled the bottom of the bowl. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to get to, like, here. Watch. He's like, oh, it's even with the foam. <laughs> Got to give you more foam, then. No, look at that. Look at that. All right, I'll give it to you. Look at that. That's a perfect freaking split. That's a pretty, pretty good. That's a, there we go. That's I a know split. my glasses. That's a good split. Dang it. That's a good split. <laughs> anyway. It's a much stronger split. Ooh. Wow. Yeah, that spice really comes through. That does. A little bit of nutmeg I was on say, that. It tastes more like nutmeg. Um, and if I may, a little bit of cherry up front. Really? I was going to like chive or something like that. Cin it almost tastes not cinnamon, like cinnamon stick. Nutmeg and like a really horchata hard, maybe. Horchata, yeah, or horchata yeah. type yeah. type thing. But I think that's like the the how bourbon gives a vanilla almost. Yeah. And then, you know, you can get a cinnamon and yeah. nutmeg can with that, I think could give a vanilla 
Like, yeah. Give it a horchata. Yeah. Uh, do they tell you what spices? It just says spices, I think. This year is a blend of 24, oh. 18, 12, and 8 month bourbon barrel aged dark stars in 7 to 12 year old Kentucky bourbon barrels. Just smooth, a touch of sweetness, dance bells. Hot finish wave. Okay, here we go. Uh, cinnamon, nutmeg, allspice, ginger. I was going to say allspice too. Ginger, vanilla, and clove. Okay. So we got like four we out of seven. Yeah, yeah. I think <laughs> pretty much we And I was thinking vanilla. Yeah. Um, but we had the vanilla. I was like, oh, it tastes yeah. like vanilla. Yeah. Yep. But no, uh, the, uh, you started talking. I went allspice. It tastes like allspice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All, I forgot about allspice. Yeah. yeah. Which is essentially a blend of everything. Right. <laughs> so right. Like, why put allspice in it when right. all your other ingredients is allspice? This is what that, uh, gosh, what was that? The uh, Belgian white uh, horchata wanted to be. Oh, the yeah, new, yeah. The yeah, new yeah, mood yeah. horchata. The, 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 yeah, the new. The, this is what that wanted what was to that? be. Fat, not fat tire. Yeah, there was a Belgian. No, it was a uh, uh, new, uh, new moon. New moon. Yeah, or blue, 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 blue moon. Blue yeah, moon. Blue moon. Oh, that was horrible, wasn't yeah, it? That was bad. That I was have bad. one down in the fridge if you want one. I mean, I'll, I'll do my <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's what oh. this like. It tried to imitate that. So this is the real thing, and the blue moon was the Huawei of it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Um. But yeah, so then I gave, so you have the original version, so no spice, just bourbon. But actually, I almost think the bourbon gives it maybe even also a little coconut flavor. Yeah. Like a, tr not coconut, every time I say it's tropical, I always, my mind always goes to coconut. Yeah. No, yeah. tropical to me is usually a, a citrus or, or something like that. I, mean, I think coconut or pineapple, but with beer, yeah. when I think tropical, it always tastes coconut. Yeah. Because that's just a easy flavor to get into it like, totally easier totally although i wouldn't mind that'd be weird to have a pineapple lime uh imperial stout that would be depending on what it was i could see some lime but i had a lime uh a lime uh the key lime pie hmm. goes sour it was pretty decent hmm. but again it was more of an evening drink salty yeah tart um Speaking of register uh, problems, yes, <laughs> that we are not having with this beer. Moving right in. Moving right in. Uh, so, this one's an interesting story because no one cares. Uh, yeah, well, Windows doesn't. Microsoft doesn't care. Microsoft doesn't care. They they've said straight out this doesn't qualify for a, uh, a patch fix. Yeah, doesn't reach the level of severity that we need to consider to patch it. Um. Their Excuse registry me. warning file. Or the, yeah. The, so uh, how many of you guys have ever run a registry and gotten that little pop-up that says, are you sure you want to run this? Right. So um, if you want to modify your registry and you don't know what you're doing and you, uh, someone says, oh, just run this .reg file. Yeah. Um, and and it'll, uh, it'll do it for you. Yeah. It'll, it'll put all these entries in. I'm sure as a dev, you've done this many times. Many a time. I, I need to, oh, yeah. you, you ran installer 0. 0.7. We're up to 0. 0.9 now, and I've got all these mm -hmm. tweaks yeah, I need to make. It's the same software, just the installer's yeah. different. Uh, so I need you to run this reg file real quick. That'll solve all the issues. Yep. Um, so you run the reg file, and the default window that pops up is is an information warning. It's not a warning, it's, it's an informational bubble. And it says, are you sure you want to apply all of the registry settings within this file to your computer's registry, yes or no? And if you click yes, it'll say, okay, settings have been applied, and you click okay. So it's a it's a two error message uh, prompt that, that pops up. Are you sure? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Yeah. Well, are you sure? And then, okay, we've done it. Yeah. It, it is basically what it is. Um, someone has found within Windows 10 a method of changing the dialogue that pops up with uh, that first message. So not, you can make, and you can make it say whatever you want. You can make it say instead of, are you sure you want to apply all the settings within this registry file to your computer's registry? You can make it say, are you sure you want to patch crisis three? Yeah. 
Are you sure you want poo poo? Are you sure you want to apply patch to Microsoft Office four dot three dot? Yeah, whatever you want. Are you sure you want to do this? Because this is going to cause a virus in your computer, and IT is going to be really mad at you. Whatever. It's a great prank, Mm -hmm. which I'm probably going to do now. Yeah. (laughs) To a lot of guys. Oh, if you just want to generate Windows messages, I've got I've got stuff for that. Oh, I got I got I got scripts that'll do. Yeah, I've got scripts that'll do that. Every hour on the hour. Yeah, I I did that to a couple people, but then I forgot to um, delete the 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 quick lookup. (laughs) So (laughs) she she called me. Why is this on here on on the quick lookup of what I installed and really quick? I was like, ah, you caught me. Um, my best prank was, uh, having my, uh, one of our executives machines boot into Windows (laughs) 3.11. Wait, was it a skin or was it actually 3.11? Yes. That's the two part question. (laughs) Um, so no, uh, his machine booted into the domain login screen. Okay. As soon as he logged in, I had it hide all windows so he just logged into a black screen it loaded dos box which then loaded windows 3.11 oh, yeah. on his nice. machine in full screen mode nice uh so it was completely invisible to him after he'd logged in um he had his domain network drives mapped into windows 311 um i had gone through the trouble of <laughs> so installing microsoft office 1.0 which it which included excel word and access so he could still use all of his programs and access all of his docs so long as they weren't docx. Uh, so it's so, like so it was like three point one one, but it, it worked. It like it worked. Oh, I wanted to do my it job. It worked I on the see. domain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it was that, an elaborate that's, prank. <laughs> that's a that's a I got I got plenty of time on my hands. Yeah. Here. That that was I have way too much time yeah. on my hands, and I've I've integrated networking within DOSBox, and I've done this and I've done that. Yeah, April first is coming after all. Um, yeah. Uh, I have been completely forbidden from pulling pranks at my my workplace anymore oh, yeah, because I, I'm a nuclear power when it comes to that. I, I should, I should. Oh man, everyone would like freak out. That's the problem. I think I would actually freak too many people out to where yeah my business would stop. Right. And yeah, and and I've I've always uh, if I pull a prank, I make sure that I'm on site. So to, when they call me to complain about it, I go, ah, oh, I know what it is. Yeah. Hold on. I got you. Virus attack, people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, no, we, uh, um, one of our executives was, was pretty good at pranking. Not like technical pranks, but he's really good at like just pranking Physical, in yeah, general. Prank, prank pranks. Yeah. Um, so, uh, he's, he's a little bit older guy and he would, uh, he left his keys in his old truck for a while. Mm. Uh, so I would move his truck in the parking lot from time to time. Uh, You're getting that old. Right. Uh, so so he was good at like the old school pranks, like the whoopee cushions and the this and the that. You know, the the, the physical old. The, the physical old. Oh, I sat down because I was three, three Stooges slapstick I was, I humor. I wasn't paying attention. Style you got pranks. Me. Right. Um, I'm good at the technical pranks. Yeah. Uh, you know, well outside the scope of like changing your desktop background, but all your desktop icons are still there. Oh, that's child's play. Oh yeah, the, the wallpaper screenshot. Yeah, and, and yeah, <laughs> yeah. That that's child's play. I yeah. did that. Honestly, that was like the first month I got hired. I yeah, did that. I was like, yeah, I got. Yes. Yeah. Just to tell people, this is who I am. But no, so he he and I went went in a prank war for a little while, and it eventually became a moratorium on pranks because they were getting out of hand. Oh. <laughs> So I, I am forbidden from from pulling pranks in my my current office. Um, anyway, so you could change the dialog message that popped up to say whatever you wanted within within the dialog message. Um, now this didn't work with previous versions of Windows. Yeah, prior to ten. I think yeah, they said eight point one and down didn't. Eight point one and down it didn't work. What? Well, it would work. It would show up your custom message. But then it would also display the do you want to apply all the settings within the registry message after that. Um, So it would kind of ignore the yes, no on your message. Um, Now, Microsoft, uh, or sorry, says we can inject our own messages through the file name to direct a user to wrongly click the yes button as expected uh, in the are you sure you want to continue dialog box. Um, The spoofing flaw lets us spoof the are you sure... You want to continue warning message instead of, to instead read click yes or whatever uh, to say whatever we like, uh, potentially making user 
think they're installing or canceling a, an install. Um, and uh, having the security checkpoint lie to them. Uh, Microsoft wasn't impressed. They, uh, Microsoft told them the registry file was created with the title you suggested, but the error message was clear. Um, as in, it's still an informational dialogue. And anyone knows an informational dialogue, you need to completely read f- fully through. Yeah. And um, no one does. And then, uh, and then Microsoft senior security director said the issue submitted does not meet the severity bar for uh, servicing via a service via a security update. Um, so basically, yes, you found a flaw. Yes, you found an exploit, but we're not going to patch it. Yeah. Well, essentially, it was you found a flaw. Does it do anything? No. Right. You're, you're just rewording, or it could possibly be right. a prank on anyone. Now, you now here's to. now here's the deal. Um, on the surface, this is not a very big exploit. This is, I can change anything I want in the registry. Um, on the more technical side of things, if I can change the registry, I can change almost any function of the machine. I can change DNS servers. I can change, uh, I can insert, I, I can insert, DN- I can insert name server lists yep. in, into something. So if I go to google.com, it redirects me to a malicious version of google.com. Um, if I... Uh, you can set VPN proxies or, or oh, yeah. pro- proxy servers, uh, un- unsecured proxy servers uh, through through a registry entry. So you could redirect someone and read all of their unencrypted traffic free and clear because they're now going not, through a proxy. Not, yeah, they're going directly through your line right. or whatever line you directed them to. Yep. Uh, uh, at Craft Computing, looks like everything for the YouTube video notes is still from episode 73. That's freaking weird because mine is up to date and I just went straight to the Craft Computing live page. Well, you know, this has happened quite a bit a few the past couple of episodes. It usually takes about 24 hours. No, no, because I update all of my my live stream shows oh, really? with current notes, with current bullet points. Okay. And mine is accurate if I go straight to Craft Computing slash live. Uh, that's accurate. But again, YouTube switched me over to Studio Beta and the live streaming, uh, what you can configure for the live stream is either completely broken or completely different from what it was before. Have you ever experienced where you're clicking save and it says, oh, sorry, we can't save this right now. Yes. I get that all the time. Yep. And I'm like, what are you talking about? What? Yep. What? Are, I just changed the word and and deleted it. Yeah. We can't save this right now. We yep. can't save this right now. Yeah. Um, but... Uh, Outside of just manipulating network traffic and network routes and things like that via DNS or proxy, you could also enable startup items to run as services in the background. Now, I, this wasn't saying it's going to disrupt the registry, though. This was saying it was going to disrupt the dialog box that was coming up to say... Right, but if you can attack the registry by, by tricking someone into saying, oh, I want to apply this update to Crisis 3, and then change the registry to basically run your own malicious payload. I guess. You, yeah, okay. Um, so, so you're saying, hey, do this for Crisis 3, and then they could put it in a, a blank right. message. The, the registry could be whatever they want. Whatever they want. Right. Okay, yeah, I get that. Now I get that. That actually could be pretty... Right. I didn't think of that. Yeah, I, thought, by, I thought this was like, oh, this is stupid. But Right, yeah. no, by changing the dialog box for the registry and potentially tricking a user into accepting the install yeah, of the registry the, key... If the user didn't know what he had or what he right. was downloading or whatever. There are malicious things that you can do within the registry that are totally kosher with the with the, the Windows operating system that you could sniff data, you can redirect DNS, you can run malicious packages, maybe not at that time, but you can certainly set a malicious package to run at startup. Yeah. You can set one-time run things. Um, and yeah, Skull, I, uh, on, on Discord, I believe you guys that it's showing up with the old notes. I'm not sure why because... It was updated, supposedly, and if I go straight to youtube.com slash sleeve slash craft computing slash live, I'm getting the current notes. Wait, what was he? He used that slash computing. Yeah, he used that slash live. Oh, no, sorry. The, oh, it didn't update the actual links. What the crap? Because it didn't say. It updated the title. It didn't update the links. YouTube! <laughs> Yeah. Oh god, what is that? <laughs> and demonetized. Um, Robot House! Dinkleberg! <laughs> what else you got? Damn, I think I can mess yeah. <laughs> I wanted the Robot House. Yeah. <laughs> what is this? Did you see? What is it? Was it? Who, who was it? 
on Discord. Hey, by the way, if you haven't joined Jeff's Discord, by the way, this is a great segment since we're talking about it. Since we're sitting here complaining about my live stream. Yeah, since we're complaining about it. Uh, <laughs> joins De Jeff's Discord. Uh, we He actually did has been doing a tremendous job of uh, creating some really cool channels and organize it very well. I must applaud you on that. Um, with it, some clever naming. With some clever naming. Uh, only one really not doesn't fit the theme, but still kind of does. Um... <laughs> It, it was the uh, um, 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 historical documents. Still, okay. Because technically it's not Trek. It's still the third best Star Trek movie it's, out there. Uh, yeah, okay. Still. <laughs> <It's>, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, it's a dollar. It used to be the best. It, no. There was a time it was the best Star Trek movie. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. No. Well, what was first above Contact it? came out before that. Did it? Yes. Okay, then I'd take First Contact first. first. Then what's after that? And, and uh, Voyage Home. Voyage Home is great, and I honestly, Wrath of Khan is fantastic. <sighs> Wrath of Khan is a fantastic. It doesn't age well. It, you go, know, go back and watch. I, it. I, I will say, probably have eight, nine years. Right. I, I, I feel the same way about Wrath of Khan that I do about the original Mad Max. I, yeah, I don't They're terrible those. movies. Today. But okay, I'll, I'll, terrible I'll, cinematography, I'll, terrible plot I, lines, I will terrible writing. One thing. That Wrath of Khan did the best that no Star Trek or space movie that I can tell of mm -hmm. has ever done is the Z-axis idea. Oh, they're above us. So they're above us. Oh, we can move up and down, yeah. just not left to right. I was like, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what? How come no one ever does this? Mm -hmm. You know, um, but anyways... Uh, it's, it's a minimum of a dollar to join. You get access to a great channel, a great community. We're just, everyone's up almost 24 hours a day. Someone's always on the channel. We got uh, uh, car talk, meme wars. We got uh, tech trading area, uh, random chit chat, music now, movies and, and TV. Uh, gaming and computers. Gaming, cars. Computers, cars, yeah. Everything you want. That all these little, if, as long as enough people that have joined Jeff's channel start talking about it, and another one, he creates a subsection yep. channel for that, because, and then we all join in, and it becomes a great thing. Yep. Uh, it's fantastic. So, join that, if you can. If you want to, please contribute. Link is down in the video description. There you go. Uh, by the way, you have to join my Patreon, which is a dollar. That's, uh, that's a do dollar. dollar minimum. Yeah, dollar minimum. Um, Couldn't remember if you said it or not. I, I said, I think I said Discord, but yep. do dollar minimum. You can always do more, but dollar minimum. Yep. Yep. And it does provide all of this. Actually, it's it's not just Jeff's pocketing it. No, it yeah. actually does provide for the content of this show. Yep. It's not the beer that we have. It's it's the Well, it's some of the beer that we have. Very little. <laughs> uh, but it actually is, is the equipment and, and the cool things Jeff is able to provide for the show yep. that all of you enjoy. Yep. If you like my crispy new 4K camera, that was bought pretty much entirely with uh, my Patreon dollars from day one. There you go, guys. So, so everyone's always been saying like, wow, the channel looks really good. That's all because of you guys. Yep. It really is. Yep. So they haven't bought the lens yet, but they're, they're getting close. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yeah. uh, Hopefully Microsoft will will kind of reevaluate that one, see it as a potential issue. Well, um, I think if enough people complain, enough people do something like that. It funds possibly. Jeff's nuke stockpile. Yeah, well, my, yeah, my nuclear arsenal. Yeah, Jeff does have less than ten nukes. Yeah, I, I'm still upset they put me at below, below North Korea. North Korea. Yeah. I know I have more than Kim. Well, I think you have more that will fire. It's true. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> he might technically have more. They just won't go more than 50 feet. Mm -hmm. You know, it's still technically airborne. Well, on, th well, on three of them are goats <laughs> duct taped to, to stolen Russian ICBMs. Still nuclear. Yeah. That's right. So. Ah, oh, that means it's armed. <laughs> two kicks for armed, two kicks for disarmed. That's right. That's right. We have a very secure system. <laughs> All right. Oh. Uh, Oculus Rift. Yeah. New news for Oculus Rift. Uh, so they are coming out with a brand new headset uh, next month. Yeah, real soon. Uh, and it was kind of odd that they just announced this recently, too. Yeah. I, I thought that was odd. Announced uh, today. Yeah, it was. And I 
was hesitant to post this because I was like, if it's that soon, it had to have been talked about a while ago. Nope. And I couldn't find anything, nope. so I nope. was really hoping I wasn't going to be made fun of this channel yep. for posting a stupid article. Because uh, it's happened before. <laughs> Multiple times. Yes. yes. And I wasn't the host. The co-host. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot about those. <laughs> Why the hell did John post it? This is six months this? old. Uh, yeah. That was a pretty good one. We talked about this before. Yeah. 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 Anyway. <laughs> this is fake. <laughs> yeah. There's been a couple of those, too. There's been a couple of those, too. Um, but, uh, so this is a, a basically a brand new Oculus Rift. Uh, with inside-out tracking, high def, mm -hmm. uh, supposedly. Right. Supposedly. High, higher resolution Higher screens. resolution frame. Yeah. But, you know, it, so it's supposed to be uh, uh, 2560 by 1440. So, essentially, right. uh, 1280 per eye. Right. Uh, an interesting thing I thought, though, was it is a slower... 18 hertz. It's a refresh rate. 80 hertz. 80, 80 hertz. Yeah. Sorry, 80, yeah. 80, 80 hertz. Then the uh, original 90 hertz. Mm -hmm. uh, I, what, I don't think that would matter. But I maybe. don't think there's going to be any perceivable difference to that. No. Um, because they're using OLED low persistence displays, yeah. um, I don't think there's any going to be any perceivable difference between 80 and 90 hertz. Um, if you can tell me on a gaming monitor with no frame counter... The diff that the 10, 10 hertz difference from, from eighty two to eighty seven or from eighty to ninety. Be my guest. Yeah. Be my um, guest in a blind taste test, uh, and and we'll talk. Yeah. But uh, but even in VR, even with the displays that close, I think because of the tech that they're putting inside of this, it's not going to be a perceivable distance difference whatsoever. No. Uh, a couple of the other cool points that I'll hit on right here for this was that they were talking about the weight distribution of the headset, mm -hmm. that it's not going to all fit on the bridge on of your nose. the bridge nose. of your nose anymore. They're saying a lot of the weight will be uh, kind of back on the headband. Supported by the crown. Yes, yeah, supported by the crown. So it's not going to give you a sore neck, not going to be, you know, just really harsh on you. And I believe they said um, uh, headphone or, or audio speakers built into the headset. Yeah, um, this was kind of the thing that I was a little disappointed with, um, was the Oculus Rift, one of the cool things that they include is the click in, click out over ear speakers um, that do a pretty decent job of isolating you in VR while still kind of being able to hear things around you. Uh, what they're aiming to do with this headset is trying to make it a little bit more approachable and not have people feel so claustrophobic. So what they've done is they've done away with the over ear speakers and now they have speakers that are built into the headband that simply shoot down at your ears. Yeah. So there's no loss of sound from the outside world. All you're doing is piping in additional sound. Um, yeah, I, for, I, for me with VR, it is that feeling of immersion uh, where, I, where I forget I'm in the outside yes. world. I don't want to hear my footstep on a concrete or wooden floor or whatever. I don't want to hear the my voice echoing or like, ah, yeah. and then I hear it echo off of a mirror yeah. or whatever room I'm in. Or the clickety clack of my refrigerator, mm. you know, going on to defroster because I'm in my garage because I need the space. Which fridge? Uh, all three, unfortunately. All three of them. <laughs> they all do it at different times. It's really because yeah. they're all different sizes. Yep. Uh, a lot of my videos, you'll see my bloopers are stupid fridge, <laughs> and then or I'm like, screw it, I'll just do the sound with it in there because I don't really care. Uh, but yeah, that would your old Seven Up cooler is really loud it too. It is really loud. Uh, but that would distract me. And that, that's the thing. I really want that immersive yes. feeling in there. Um, so, but the price point, the $400. 400 bucks. 400 bucks yep. for a very high def Oculus Rift. Right. So they're, they're boasting roughly the same uh, resolution as the Vive Pro. Yep. Uh, they're going from uh, 1080 by 1280 to, what was it? A 12, 1280 by 1400. Uh, 1280 by 1400. Um, Hey, I nailed it. Awesome. You did. Um, anyway, uh, so they're, you're only going up a couple hundred pixels in each dimension, which isn't huge. And honestly, with the lens bend, that if, if they kept the same exact tech in both areas, they just made the screen a little bit denser, yeah. there would be no difference. Um, I made this complaint with, uh, with the Vive Pro after playing with it for a little bit, where there's still a screen door effect. There's still this, there's still that. There's still things that tell me this isn't a high-res headset. Um, even though they increased the resolution to about the same level. Um, 
what they're saying though is they've actually completely re-engineered the Fresnel lenses and uh, the screen door effect is still present, but it's not super present. It's not in your face. Yeah, uh, it, it's you. You do have to look mm, for it. it. Right. You'll probably see it in the menu because mm -hmm. it's just a big blank. You know, wherever you're at menu. But once you're in the game, stark white background, you're gonna see it. Yes. On the on the on the Pimax 5K Plus, I see a screen door effect on a stark white background. Yes. But it's not at all distracting, and mm. and I'm, and so I'm expecting something very similar out of this. Now I wouldn't expect the Pimax. I I would bet that's better than this. I would expect that to be better. Than yes. This. Yes. But what's the price point of that? A lot. Exactly. And <laughs> the, so, the, the Pimax 5K Plus is bar none the best visual experience I've had in VR yet. As yeah. far as level of fidelity, uh, the crispness of the image, bar none it is the best thing I've had yet. Yeah. But there is something to be said for still the Vive and, and the and the Oculus Rift and hopefully the, the Oculus S2. S, yeah. Is it S2? Or, Oculus it's, S. It's, it's, is it Rift S? Rift S. Rift S, yes. Oculus Rift S. So, no, it was actually... Interesting with the Rift S is a four hundred price point. I was like, that's mm -hmm. affordable. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's it is second level uh, mm -hmm. VR upgrading. It's like yeah. I went from I I'm still at the uh, Windows Mixed Reality. Mm -hmm. I'm enjoying it, yes. but I'm like you know it's it, I, I get a lot of screen door. I get a lot of screen door, yeah. and and uh, you feel like you're looking through goggles. It really does. It yeah. really does, and. Uh, I have the HTC. Mm -hmm. Even as great quality as it still feels a little cheap. Yeah. Uh, uh, there's some gapping issues. Or you have uh, Acer. 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 Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Acer. Yeah. Acer. Yeah. Uh, some gapping issues. I I can play Arizona Sunshine and I'm happy because I get really immersed in that again mm -hmm. because of the headset. Yeah. I would upgrade. I'm happy enough that with that that I enjoy playing it that I want to get. A better experience, right? And I don't want to pay a, a, a four-digit yeah. market, you know, yeah. or close to that. Yeah, I want to pay probably around this price point. Yeah, I, uh, boy, I've spent a lot of money on, on <laughs> VR here. Um, I, now, full disclosure, I did not buy the Pimax headset. They sent that out for review, but I've Great bought all that. my other head. Yeah, but I have bought all my other headsets. I've bought uh, my HTC Vive. Um, I bought. Three different versions of the Oculus Rift. Uh, I, I had. Uh, I remember when it first came out, you I bought had, one. You were. I had one of the the uh, the DK ones. I had two of the DK twos. Um, I do have a Lenovo Explorer Windows Mixed Reality headset. Um, yeah, I've I've got a lot of gear. Um, but uh, four hundred dollars approachable price point. It is approachable. I, I think it is the the second. T the mid tier or m low mid tier, low yeah. low high, low high mid tier. You know, it's right in that yeah, that that meteor area of I got a little extra money to spend. This is what I'm thinking. Yeah. It, it's going to be the price point, like you said, between um, uh, oh gosh, uh, the what pro, um, uh, vi five. Vi yeah, the Vive Pro. Sorry. I was trying to give it to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I was, I I was, gonna say I was trying to enjoy my beer, John. I was, I was, I was getting to. I had just one. taken was, a drink, and I'm not just slamming was, that down for your going, benefit. I was going to say that, and I was like, something yeah. pro, and I was like, no, no, no that's the wrong one. Uh, but yes, I, it's right in that price point. And what the Vive Pro is, what five hundred? Uh, six hundred. Six hundred. So yeah. this, this really is that competitive price point. Yeah, um, definitely. And it's coming out spring. And and so some, and something you mentioned inside out tracking yeah uh, that that's been my one of my biggest complaints about VR is the need for external trackers uh, I have four headsets um, I still on occasion use the Windows Mixed Reality headset because I don't have to turn anything on I don't have to set anything up I just put the damn thing on and I go yeah um, and it is the lowest quality headset that I own as far as field of view, as far as vision, as far as tracking performance. There are games I flat out cannot play in Windows Mixed Reality that I can play on other headsets because tracking is kind of an issue, especially once you get kind of up even with your head. But if you're just wanting to get quick and dirty. If I'm just wanting to play super hot or, or jump into something real quick and, and whatnot, or if I want to take that headset somewhere and demo it for someone, yeah. that's what I take with me. I don't I don't take the, the HTC Vive. I don't take the Pimax yeah. because the setup is intensive on those things. Yeah. Windows Mixed Reality, literally two plugs. There's no power cables. Yeah. There's no nothing else. It's bus powered off USB. Yeah. 
you're off and rocking. Just as long as you got two, three, three you're yep. good to go. Yep. So, so yeah, uh, looking forward to getting my hands on this one. Yeah, that I think this would be a pretty cool review. Yep. Uh, for you on a comparison price point, uh, and, and quality. Yep. All, all around and um, plus, I'm really excited for you to have extra headsets to give me stuff. <laughs> Because out of Rhett and Steve, I have the only mixed reality stuff. I was like, give it to me, Jeff. <laughs> give it to me. Jeez. <laughs> That's the only reason I'm on this channel. <laughs> I think I've given you all things over the course of the year or so. Eh. Yeah. I give you beer. What, what else do you want, John? What else do you want? <laughs> I'm still giving you beer. Did I not just give you a $150 keyboard? Shh. Jeez. Which... I have a complaint on that keyboard that you did not address in Do the you? video. Do yes. You? The it, the keys hold so much grease. Oh, yes. Yes. Well, you did not. I mean, my, my space bar now, half of it is covered in just sweat. Yeah. You know. Uh, oh, well, it's oh. all those damn Cheetos you're. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. But it, it literally, like, it. it one half is shiny and certain keys are shiny yeah. because whatever they put on those keys, whatever texture, yeah. it just sucked it up and yeah. I can't get anything out of it. Lame. It you're like, that's why I gave it to you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I still It's a good keyboard. It is a great yeah. keyboard. It's a little soft. I would I prefer some some brown keys. Yeah, some ch cherry brown keys. Yes, right. yeah, I, I like a clickety clack. Yep. Uh, they're a bit soft, but I, it's much nicer than the keyboard I was using. Right. So. Yeah. Um, some graphics news. Yes. So. This is cool. I like this. This is cool. Uh, this is confusing. <laughs> what? Basically, it goes against everything they stated. So. So I mentioned at the beginning, it was all smoke and mirrors. Well, it turns out it might be. Yep. Are those RTX cores actually worth a goddamn? <laughs> Did you buy the, what was it, the 2080 Ti? <laughs> right. Were you one of the early adopters? Right. Sucks for you. <laughs> so, now we know DLSS is worth a damn. We, we know that the Tensor cores that are, that are doing DLSS... It's still not as good as just straight up anti-aliasing, mm -hmm. uh, but it is an improvement on running 1080p only. Uh, so we know DLSS works and that does rely on the tensor cores. What we don't know is what actually relies on the RTX cores. And what we don't know is what's the performance going to be when Nvidia releases a driver next month that allows your GTX 10 series cards or the 1600 series cards that just uh, released, or your laptop bo 10 series, Mobile both cards. standard and max Q, to run ray tracing. <laughs> yeah. That's what we don't know. Uh, so there's a lot of confusion going on in my head right now that Nvidia will be releasing a driver update to 10 series and 1600 series graphics cards, uh, GTX 6, uh, 1060 six gig and higher. So three gig need not yep. apply. Um, that will enable RTX in the RTX titles that are out there. All three of them. Yeah. Oh, that, that is the key. It was, it has to, the, the, the software has to allow it. Right. Uh, All three games. Right. So you will be able to play Rise of the Tomb Raider or Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I forget which one. Shadow of the Tomb it's Raider. The Tomb Raider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Uh, Battlefield Five and Metro Exodus ray trace on a 10 series graphics card. Um, <sighs> boy, oh. boy. I, I love doing this. Well, well. Here's the thing. I don't even see a difference in that image. Oh my god! Well, I saw. I, I the I, smoke I, changed. Okay, you, you can see the crystals in the background of of the the his. The dragon, see it gets darker, a little more. The mouth is a little bit different. The head's a little bit different. But you know what's funny is the article talks about the paws. Not, not, it, it mentions the crystals, but nothing on the, the head. But it mentions the paws of the, the shadows being sharper. See, because that little, that little corner, right, you can't see it, but you know, between that, that pops up. Boom. Right there, right there. That's it. That, that's what your driver's going to be, That's guys. worth it. That's your driver. That's driving. totally worth it. Right there. That That's what that, that $1,200 video card's yeah. going to get you. 
Right, yeah. Right there, right there. A little less smoke and and, and some bent shadows. Yeah. <laughs> I really hope, and I'm going to be testing, uh, an RTX 2080 versus a GTX 1080 Ti because those are the same performance. I don't think you'll be the only one. I, I, I know I won't, but I'm going to be testing that as soon as this driver drops. Um, RTX 2080 versus GTX 1080 Ti are they identical? If they're identical, NVIDIA has some planning to do. Now, wait. When does this driver drop? April. Next a month. Okay. So I said, like, is this going to be Friday flight? Sometime Actually. in April. Um, NVIDIA is going to have some planning to do. Yeah. No. If, if this performance is identical. Because they've sold us these cards on the promise of RTX cores, hardware level ray tracing enabled in games hybrid ray tracing but are but ray tracing nonetheless now the three different games that are out use three different components of ray tracing for battlefield 5 it was reflections they don't do ambient occlusion they don't do lighting they don't do global illumination or anything like that what theirs was was reflection so if i'm looking off this way and there's something off camera over here and there's, there's a window water, right here or water, or water. I can see it i can see an object that's not currently being rasterized by the graphics card that's what the reflection ray tracing enabled. Which that do. idea is cool. It's cool, but it's not game changing. No, it's not game changing. It is more realistic in a kind of Yes. Sense. I don't think actually, and in reality, I don't think we'd ever see that. Right. In actual reality. Right. But um, now didn't, didn't in PAX, the demo, mm -hmm. unfortunately I had to leave, but mm -hmm. wasn't essentially everything that you're saying that that was that whole meeting was for. Right. Okay, uh, so we'll, we'll do Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Shadow of the Tomb Raider does shadows. They do ray trace shadows. Mm -hmm. And so they don't do reflections. They Those don't do global illumination. And, they, and they, do, they, do, they do candlelight and how does it cast onto an object and what shadow does that object cast? That's yeah. a ray traced feature. But that's the only one they implemented. Uh, when it comes to Metro Exodus, which we did get to demo back in September at PAX, uh, that one was using global illumination and ambient occlusion. Yeah which is kind of the gold standard for what ray tracing is. Now they still weren't doing reflections and there was still nothing on the water that was ray traced. And so they started us off with a water scene and the water was just rasterized with, with standard global illumination yeah. uh, uh, you see, you, tracing. Yeah, you see, um, yeah. And it wasn't good. It didn't look S good. Sun vapor, sun vapors right. and whatnot. Right, um, but, uh, but you get out of there and, and, and we had the RTX on, RTX off button that we could hit, and it was real time, 45 frames a second on a 2080 Ti. That's what we found out, or you found out later. Yep, with a 7900X and a 2080 Ti. Um, but, uh, so we could turn it on and off and, and judge the difference. And I will say, it did make a reasonable difference in the lighting fidelity within the game. We got to play a daylight lit scene. We got to play a nighttime lit scene. We got to play a scene where some enemies were walking around with lanterns and uh, and walking through the forest and we could see the light both cascading and being blocked by foliage. And, oh, okay, yeah, and like that the... was cool. Uh, but was it game changing for what we have now? And, and it was pretty, but the answer is still no, especially at the performance hit that it took. But what's going to be really interesting is taking those same three games and benchmarking them against a, tw a 1080 Ti and seeing if there's an RTX difference. Now, do you, let me ask you this. Do you think they're doing this to be like, we need to get that inventory, that old 1080 Ti no, out the ten, of here? No, the 1080 Ti's, or, 1080s, and 1070s are already gone. Are they? They're already okay. gone. So this is fan service. This is maybe introducing ray tracing. But at the same time, because that's what I was expecting. If you introduce ray tracing to people who have 10 series cards, and they go, "Wow, I'm only three percent difference in performance from an RTX card, which is supposedly well, using RTX cores to ray trace," all of a sudden, every single person who did invest was an early adopter of RTX cards, is going, "What the bloody Nvidia?" Well, didn't we even talk about? Good for you, but if you're an early adopter, uh, you're going to be God bless you. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think there's even three episodes of Talking Heads of us stating that. Right. Uh, you know, no one does the early adoption. If you are PC elite, whatever mm -hmm. you want to be, I got the best of the best. Uh, we were still very unsure of this. This only proves that point. Ever, this is hitting the nail on the head of just hammering it down. 
it was a pointless thing. Yep. Wait till the price drops. It's it's n- driver based. Yeah. Well, no, it's developer based. Not developer, but you know, it, it's it's essentially now you now the engines have ray tracing enabled already. You you can you can tell the games to ray trace your games. Yeah. Um, the problem is what settings you enable and are they actually going to be playable at the frame rates that you need them to be playable at? Uh, and there's some environments that no, they're not. And and it really is an all or nothing thing. If you have, let's say, the original Quake. Well, let's, let's say we have Quake 2 and we want to ray trace that game. Uh, Good game. 85% of that game might be able to be ray traced uh, 100% natively with your graphics power through through RTX or through what we might find out later is just CUDA. <laughs> um However, if you walk into a room and all of a sudden that one room that you want to showcase because your game depends on it is a massive sanctuary that typically with you would just put a couple of, of lighting, with yeah. tons of lighting and tons of angles and yeah. lots of objects and creatures Shadows and things. And everything going on, yeah. Right. And your graphics card all of a sudden dips to four frames per second. That's not a sellable title. And in a game engine, it has to kind of be all or nothing if you're talking about a lighting engine being worked or a lighting framework being used in that game. Um, unless you go to just a pre-rendered scene like we did in the 90s. Uh, yeah. Hey, we got some good live action scenes. For, Dude, uh, there were some really good... Anim- Dark Forces 2, yeah. Jedi Knight. Oh, there were some... Oh, yeah. There, I mean, that was basically, if you took all of those scenes, that was like a slight movie or yeah. mini movie. You're like, why wasn't this developed by LucasArts? Right, and the production value was amazing. Yeah, it was amazing, yeah. Yeah. Um, right. But anyway, better than the modern cartoons that come out. Uh, so uh, someone pointed out in comments that Crytek recently did a demo with the Vega Fifty Six with a fully ray traced uh, uh, demo that was real time ray traced, and absolutely right. So there is graphics performance there to do some form of ray tracing in games. It just has to be developed within the engine and then supported by the developers and then programmed into the game. And then the environments that you're creating have to be scalable enough to where you can actually render that at a playable frame rate. Yeah. There's a difference between a tech demo that is a very close case scenario that Which you only have to render it that, yeah. that you only have to render at 30 FPS, that you only have to show once that you versus a game where I'm playing Shadow of the Tomb Raider and I'm I'm walking through these narrow chasms and and and, yeah. and walkways. But all of a sudden, I come into the main body of the tomb, and it's this 400 Big meter auditorium, tall yeah. auditorium. I mean, imagine coliseum. Going, in, going into a like church coliseum, stained glass windows. Mm-hmm. What is all that ray tracing light right. gonna affect? How right. is that gonna work? And then where you were used to with a cave with a lantern, right? You know. So, so yes, good technology, but is it applicable to games as a whole right now? And the answer is still probably no. Now, Quake Two. Someone has uh, developed cool. a a version of Quake. That is fully ray traced. Trace. <laughs> now, when I say fully ray traced, I mean we're not rasterizing anything. No, it was. I'm talking we're we're imagining polygons in in 3D space, and then the only thing you see is how the light bounces off of them. Yes. Oh, it. That is ray tracing. It was that the, right there, right there. That is ray tracing. Yeah. The. Uh, the and I already played the video once, and I don't want you to full screen it. But if no, you I, I can uh, scroll down, and hit the replay button. Yeah. The the flames, the light, the flames of coral, but the yeah. lighting around the flames, the shadow casting. Right. Uh, if, if you can see the, even just the, the buckets of, the, of how they adjust. Well, the, the reflections on the ground from yeah. when he was going behind the buckets. Um, the, the, the flame behind the door and not lighting part of the doorway. That is what ray tracing yeah, you, is. You can see how he's doing, shooting through. Where before, it used to just be a ring through a tunnel. And the ring would just solid light go through. Right. No, you see. Oh, he he did a little more to the right to then right. to the left. But but if you notice, this is only being lit by light sources within the game. Yeah. This is not what we consider global illumination, where there's fake light sources added. Those light panels on the wall are actually what is lighting this game and the environment and everything about it. Um, I'm gonna switch off so I don't get a copyright yeah. strike now. Um, but. Uh, that is what ray tracing is. And that's at its heart what NVIDIA is trying to chase uh, with with this RTX. But the problem is they're not there. No. I mean, we can barely run Quake 2 fully ray traced with that level of polycons and textures at 30 FPS. In fact, in the intro, it was like 20. Um, 
we're not going to run Shadow of the Tomb Raider fully ray trace with global illumination and reflection data you're, and everything else. You're going to run the intro level where you walk to the cabin or whatever. Right. You know, that's going to be the ray tracing level when you're treasure hunting or whatever, fighting something. It's not. It's just not. We, we can't ray trace Shadow of the Tomb Raider. We could probably ray trace Tomb Raider. Like the first one. The first one. Like the PlayStation. PS1, game. yeah. We can do that. Right. Poly. Oh, well, I mean, that was a pretty... I mean, I did... Uh, who, what guy didn't... What's it well, I know you played it a lot. Let's ray trace, too. Oh, I did. Lord. Mm-hmm. Ray traced him. Triangle. Uh, I mean, those triangles... Chicken done. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I was trying to keep it PG. Uh, hey, whatever. You were the one sitting there talking about some guy chopping up a cherry tree, cussing up. I just... Talking about cooking dinner. I was, I was, sen- sen- I was censoring it. No, you mostly. weren't. I had to censor it for yeah, you. Yeah, I was kind of censoring Whatever. it. Whatever. Um, you know, there's some other slight gaming news that might, might be coming out. Mm-hmm. Is uh, recently, uh, if you guys haven't noticed, actually a big announcement happened that uh, Fox bought or Disney finally got the Fox deal going. Yes. Another interesting thing of if you guys knew a while ago, you know, obviously. Disney bought uh, Lucasfilm. LucasArts. Star Wars, obviously, is owned by Disney. But you know what they also bought? Was the rights to LucasArts game. Right. They, they didn't just buy rights to Star Wars. They yeah. bought Lucasfilm. Yeah. They bought which, everything. Which also includes Skywalker Sound. It yep. includes Skywalker Ranch. It also includes LucasArts, the gaming company. Yep. And not, not the <laughs> EA... Star well, 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 yes. Kind of, yeah, the, the EA... License? No, but no. Disney negotiated that license. Oh, afterwards. did they? Yeah. Oh, okay. That that was a hey, we own Lucas Arts. Do you want to create Battlefront? Oh, I yeah. I did not know. I thought that was yeah. a, a pre ordained. Nope. nope. That was a that was a post takeover mm, deal. Mm. Sorry, but, to, sorry to correct you. No, that's fine. Uh, <coughs> correct. Um, but Disney kind of is rumoring mm-hmm. to build back up Lucasfilm Games, which some of you might know as Lucas Arts Games. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of my personal favorite games growing up. Uh, I'm really hoping. Now, this isn't confirmed, but it is. There is job openings at Disney going on right now for, uh, and and not just for for Disney, but they're saying that they're for Lucasfilm Gaming. And it's every aspect of yeah. a gaming production. Production, company. and they're like it's it's producers and writers and developers yeah. and, and marketers. You have to be heavily involved and know your stuff <clears throat> and be synced in this industry and right. know classic stuff too. Right. So what Disney has said is that they reaffirmed that they are committed to the licensed model when it comes to the EA contract, but they're also hiring their own in-house staff. Mm-hmm. I really hope this is true. I really because because Lucas Arts or, or Lucas Arts film or games mm-hmm. were can some of my favorite Monkey Island, Grim Fandango, Full Throttle, Indiana Jones. Uh, I mean, basically half the stuff on DOS Box mm-hmm. were just Lucas Arts. Uh, you know how many Star Wars games were there that were just okay. phenomenal? Let me read the list from. We'll just go from ninety seven. To 2002. Okay? This is the list of LucasArts games that were released by LucasArts Studios from 1997 to 2002. Jedi Knight Dark Forces 2, Curse Great of game. Monkey Island, Star Wars Masters of Ter- uh, uh, Teres Kasi, uh, uh, Jedi Knight Mysteries of the Sith Expansion for Dark Forces 2, Star Wars Rebellion, Star Wars Behind the Magic, Grim Fandango, Star Wars Rogue Squadron, X-Wing Alliance, Star Wars Episode One: Phantom Menace should never be played. No, nope, don't, don't play, play that don't one. Don't play it. Pod Racer is the only good Phantom Menace game ever. Yes. Uh, Indiana Jones and the Infernal Machine, Star Wars Force Commander, uh, Episode One: Jedi Power Battles for Dreamcast, Game Boy Advance, and PlayStation. That's a great game, not on the Game Boy Advance. No. Uh, Dreamcast and PlayStation are great. Uh, Escape from Monkey Island, Star Wars Demolitions, Episode One: Battle for Naboo. Ooh, that's a good one, actually. Really, I've never played. It's never it's played. a Rogue Squadron, but set in uh, in Naboo. Episode One. Okay. And so you get the Naboo fighter, and you're playing. So you're playing Slingshot. No, no. They're the Naboo. They had those little. No, that was the those were the Gungans. Oh. You're oh. You're, you're playing Rogue Squadron like X Wing Rogue Squadron. Oh, okay, okay. But I, with the Naboo fighter. I was thinking. Uh, yeah. Gungans. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Well, the, the, the Naboo, and I was the Gungans. 
Anyway, uh, Star Same Wars planet. Math Jabba's Game Galaxy. Oh, that's my favorite. There honestly. you go. Uh, Star Wars Racer Arcade, which Java is... Java 1, Java 2. Right. Oh, Star Wars oh. Racer Arcade, which was the arcade follow-up to Episode 1 Racer. Uh, Star Wars Starfighter, Super Bob Bad Racing for PlayStation 2, uh, Galactic Battlegrounds, Rogue Squadron 2, Star Wars Obi-Wan for the Xbox, Racer Revenge for PlayStation 2, Jedi Starfighter, Jedi Knight 2, Jedi Outcast, which was the one of the best Star Wars games ever made. Never played uh clone wars bounty hunter and that's the end of the list yeah that was a five-year period that it's still in in gaming develop that's huge right. i mean you go i dare you to look up another single individual company that within five years released that many games right with that many good hits right that's the thing i, I know there's probably we haven't really, even gotten into the mid-2000s no. with nice the old republic oh, and republic commander game. And or Republic Commando and Battlefront and Battlefront yeah. Two and and all those great games that came out after that. I mean, so, there, there were so many. I'm really look Lucas Arts films too. In in general, I think came up with the click point sh- uh, adventure games. Mm-hmm. They were the best ones. The Grim Fandango, the Monkey Island, the uh, I forget what the other one. I think there's two Monkey Islands in there. Mm-hmm. Um, those are fantastic. The Full Throttle, Full Throttle, which was earlier than what he said, but. 94. The, those are some of the best comedic point-click adventure games you could ever play. Uh, the Indiana Jones ones, if you ever played the early one. Um, fantastic yeah. games. I still, to this day, probably once every four or five years, probably play one of them. Mm-hmm. Just because they're so good. Um, I don't even do the remaster version. I do the original, and I, I obviously DOS box it, but still do the original one. It's fantastic. I end up getting about halfway through it because I've already memorized half of the clues and the mysteries, but I still laugh at all the jokes. I still hit all the dialogue because I'm laughing at the jokes because they're so clever. Uh, there isn't writing like Lucas Arts films, even even like you were saying, Knights of the Republic. Mm-hmm. Great writing yes. in that. Yeah. Uh, uh, there's great storytelling. It's not just great gameplay. It's great storytelling. Disney has that ability. Mm-hmm. I really hope this is true, and I really hope they sprinkle dust some of that magic. They mm-hmm. could get carried away and just release crap, right? Like possibly the Force Awaken or uh, the Last Jedi. I mean, whatever. But who knows? Yeah. You know, I uh, the Force, the Last Jedi, the video game. Oh, I don't even want to remember play. the same parent company that was responsible for the Last Jedi. Love it or hate it, I'm kind of somewhere in the middle. Was also responsible for, um, gosh, the uh, Jen or so. The, the prequel movie that's before New Hope. Uh, the, 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 the uh, Force Awakens? No. New Hope. Force Awakens, Star Wars Story. Oh, um, um, um. Sealing the Death of Star Plans. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, Rogue literally. One, Rogue, Rogue One. Rogue One. Rogue One. I was like, Seriously, the best Star Wars movie ever. No, but... Close, but yeah, no. Not Almost even. bar none. No. There's one that's close. There's, there's, it's third best, but whatever. Ooh. Yes, it's Ooh. not even close. Because it, it's not Star Wars. It's a subgenre of Star Wars. Oof. It, it relies in the... St- it's like saying, oh, this is a Terminator movie, but it has nothing to do with Terminators. Yeah, this had a lot to do with Star Wars. It did not. No, it had to do And it with... had the best Darth Vader scene of all That's time. That's it. That is the only Star Wars. And the best overall story of all time. Yes. No. Um, Empire Strikes Back had the best Star Wars of all time. Only when you take into context what it led to in... in, in the... But that's part of the Star Wars legacy. Yeah. And if you didn't have that... this True. Was, this all comes True. back to the DS9 TNG crap that you constantly say and ds9 sucks it's yeah. not that it doesn't suck it's just not as good as tng because without tng ds9 doesn't work yep hence why tng is a better series and i prove my point thank you for joining us this is talking heads we'll see you later because <laughs> it's 10 o'clock. you don't get off the hook that hey, early it's early and we're that done easy. we're done <laughs> i gotcha Jeez. <laughs> yeah anyway so yeah the same company that is capable of of last jedi is also capable of rogue one. Oh, oh yeah no i again i think there's great potential here uh uh again but 
Disney can't falter. Yeah. Oh, totally. Uh, I, Rogue One, same deal. Solo movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. You know? yep. No, totally. Uh, <laughs> I liked Solo. It, it was okay. It was okay, but I. It's still yeah, better I, than any of the prequels. Yes. Way so so it's immediately not. It's not the worst, but it's right above the prequels. I'll take that. It's right above the... But again, Return that's... of the Jedi is better than Solo. Yes. Barely. Barely. But it is better than Return of... But, uh, and, and you're taking one of the best characters. That was the problem with Solo. Is mm-hmm. You took the best character. And you, in Lando Calrissian. And, and Lando Calrissian. The two <laughs> best characters. Okay. The, 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 the suavest. Actually, the three. Because Chewie's in it. Yeah. And Chewie's actually the best character in that movie. Yeah. That's the thing. And and you take the three best characters and you sing them down to this watered down origin story that just doesn't work. Yeah, I wasn't thrilled with the overall story, but I thought storytelling and cinematography were great in that movie. The dialogue was good and didn't leave me going, why why is he saying that? Why is he doing these things? Why is he uh, the story overall made sense. I may not have no. liked the story 100%, but the story still made sense. I, I, I don't think it made 100% sense. 100% sense? I said that correctly the first time. Yeah. Cinematography, I agree with you. I think Disney, in general, though, most of their movies, yeah. they they are innovators of yes. cinematography. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, I think they, I really hope they bring it to game. Because yeah. I don't remember a good Disney game, but... I think for graphics, I think, heck, if they did ray tracing or something like that, <laughs> kind of ties back. But I mm-hmm. think they could do really cool light bending effects yeah. uh, 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 of anything, you know. Um, they were big providers of pixel, Pixar. And, and... You, you said you never played uh, Jedi Knight, Jedi Outcast. No. Um, that game was considered for the day to be one of the most photorealistic, most graphically intensive and most beautiful as far as light reproduction games that was ever made. Mm-hmm. It was the benchmark title of the day. Now, it was based on the Quake 3 engine, and so it was just taking Which advantage is, of things re- within that. I, I remember Quake 3 being a great engine. But, but when you look at the textures that they used for the day, and the way they used lighting, and the way they did cinematography, and the, the cutscenes were all 100% rendered in engine, and so you there was no break in what was not the game versus what you're playing. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just a fantastic game for its day. And if they can meet that KOTOR, that Jedi Outcast, that level of game making uh, and storytelling within those games, I think there's potential for LucasArts to make a full return. Oh, I, I, But I, they need to be invested to the storytelling of Star Wars and, and really giving fan service to it. Well... Rather than being about... I just add in purchases and and DLC and uh, yeah, and that, microtransactions. That, 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 I, that I agree, but I, for me, Lucas Art Films. I enjoyed the Star Wars aspects, but for there was too many for me to like. Oh, there's just so much Star mm-hmm. Wars, so much Star Wars. That's why I always enjoyed the point and click adventures, the Grim Fandango, mm-hmm. the Full Throttle. Mm-hmm. It was a away from that, but it almost felt like the writers had then. Let's throw our comical relief, our, mm-hmm. our creativity in a completely different story that we could never tell in a movie aspect. Uh, almost mm-hmm. like British humor, too, was, was thrown into a right. lot of it. I loved that. I mean, a lot of the jokes. <coughs> Heck, even one of our Discord or one of your Discord people has a, a thumbnail of a LucasArts character. Yeah. And he's right there. Yeah. <laughs> Murray. Yeah. But, uh, um, take, uh, it reminds me a little bit of the Grand Tour, the new Jeremy Clarkson, yeah, the, the, the Richard the, Hammond, James top May. Top Gear Amazon. Top, top Gear Amazon, right. Yeah. Uh, but not actually set in the Amazon, because that'd be weird. Um, they, yeah. Right, top Gear Amazon. Um, it reminds me of season one, where they... Tried. Tried. They, they introduced the American. And, and the American to me, if you've never seen it, is my interpretation of 
the British attempting to do Americanized humor. Yeah. It's the same thing of the American trying to do British humor. Did you know there's been two separate reboot attempts for the IT crowd? Oh, yeah. Made in, made in the U.S. Right with, and, and they've both been the pilot episodes of episode one of the IT crowd with with American dialects and with American joke timing and whatnot. Yeah. And it's a terrible it show. It does, doesn't work. And, and it's the same thing when the British try to do American humor. When, when they know. when when they when the British go, oh, the Americans will think this is funny. Yeah, and it just falls flat. Yeah, and and so, I I get what you're saying with, with Disney with with the writing with uh there there's a difference between fan service and serving your fans, and there's a difference between like I was talking about, trying to make a good game and trying to make a game that is addictive and just gets people to buy more of it. Yeah, uh and and the old Lucas Arts games. They were tremendous games day in, day out, every single time. Yeah. Uh, with the exception of the original Phantom Menace game from 1998 for the PlayStation and PC. God, that thing was a heap and pile of crap the day it launched. Uh, and never got any better. No, uh, well, but I, but I think Lucasfilms games or, or LucasArts games as a whole, 85%. Knocked out. Of yes. The it, knocked yeah. 85% Absolutely. knocked out. I hope Disney could even just do 75. Mm -hmm. If Disney can even just do 75 and sprinkle some dust every now and then that they do and make a 90% like, oh, that's a great game. Right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to enjoy yes. this coming back. I will I will be looking for the next game that this company releases. If, if this is a very good rumor, because mm -hmm. this still is just a rumor. Yes. But if this is it's a strong But word. these are actual job postings. These are actual job postings, but the 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 wordage of Lucasfilms games, Lucas Arts games has not been mentioned. Right. But they own the rights and they're saying we want to release But Disney is looking for dedicated yeah. <laughs> game producers, game marketers, game developers, game The article even says, "Hey, here's a link to all the job descriptions. This is basically everything in the Lucas Arts game yes. department." Right. Um so it, it's a you know, 90% true rumor. Yep. Uh, I'm looking forward to this stuff. Do we want to do Q&A? No, I think we're going to call it here cuz yeah. we're at, we're at 10:15 already. Yeah. If we do Q&A, we're going to go we're for another 30, 30 minutes. minutes. Exactly. So. So I think we'll uh, we'll finish we'll up the finish, beer real quick. Yeah, it's great beer. Good, good beer. Oh, so good. I uh, as it's warming up, I'm losing some of the spices and I'm kind of missing them. Uh, yeah, but I think it's past that 55 degree level. It's probably closer than you think. It's I you well. Know, it's some of it, but I wasn't really paying attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for the last 30 to 40 minutes, I've just been drinking it. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I haven't been thinking I, about if, it, but... If I think about it and dig for it, it's there, not as strong. It's not nearly as strong. Not nearly as I'm, strong. I'm missing some of that nutmeg that I was yeah. getting up front. I get a lot of that cinnamon. I, I get a lot of cinnamon and a little bit of clove yes. is what I'm getting right now. It, it, it lost some complexity as it warmed up. It's still and good, though. It's still really good. It's still really good. It's, it's, it's still... Just, it's, it's still 14. better than eighty five percent of the beers out there. Oh yeah, it it's really is. Fourteen percent, and I wouldn't say this is fourteen percent. No, this tastes the consistency nine. pretty close. Pretty close to, to a nine. Pretty close to this nine. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Um. You want to call it? I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna call it. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us on episode seventy four of Talking Heads, your once weekly live show for the latest in beer and tech news. I almost couldn't get the standard line out. What the heck? You know, we didn't say episode 74 at the beginning. I don't think I did. No. Yep, episode 74. Welcome to the show. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing. Follow John on Twitter at Hops and Brews or follow his YouTube channel. Give him a subscribe and uh, go check his videos out. Cause He only did that because he got chewed out the last time for not doing it. Actually, that hadn't even slipped... Had Really? That didn't even cross he my mind. He got chewed out by some fans, and I came to his defense. I was like, no, it's... Jeff got chewed out. Yeah, I, I, I got called some four-letter words yeah, that I'd rather not repeat. No, so, but... For, uh, for apparently being a dick to John. Yeah, John, no, am I a dick? No. Yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> now, I was going to do a, a, a non-friendly joke, but... Yeah. Cool. yeah. No, Jeff's awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, follow me, <laughs> Hops and Brews. Subscribe, whatever. But anyways, uh... Jeff's Discord, follow that too. Uh, yep. Get, get that dollar piece. That's right. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you next week. See you guys. Cheers, guys.